has this effect. Perhaps Patrice ought to visit us more often. That's what I say. Now, don't forget what I told you about your dinner. Put it on a low light. All right, all right, all right. You've told me about a dozen times already. Well, just making sure, that's all. We don't want the lad arriving to a corned beef butter, do we? Anyway, what time are you expecting him? It's afternoon sometime. He said he'd give me a ring when he got to Dover. It's not wrong, is there? Wrong? Between you and Patrice? No! No, no, he's a wreck. Well, not between me and him. Not yet, any road. I'm not with you. Well, there will be if that little toad Lisa Woods has her way. Lisa? I thought she were a mate of yours. A mate? Mm. What kind of mate to try and go bust up me and Patrice? Lisa? Why would you want to go and do that? She's got this idea that Gary Grimshaw's giving her the elbow because he fancies me. And that he only fancies me because I gave him the come on. And did you? No. But it's not going to stop her putting poison down, is it? It's because she can't hold on to a fellow of her own. Doesn't mean she has to nip mine, does it? Well, from what I've seen, it'll take a bit more than a bit of idle gossip from the likes of Lisa Woods to put the skids under you and Patrice. I take it it is idle gossip. Yeah. There's nothing between me and Gary, and there never has been, honest. You're not to worry about then, have you? <laughs> I can't seem to be able to get into this this morning. You don't seem to be able to get into it any morning, Vera. Well, it were a long weekend, you know. We have worked for three days, you Yeah, know. well, don't say it too loud, or you'll have Baldwin abolishing you, yeah. Eee, when you think what can happen in 12 months, eh? Like what? We're all still working here, aren't we? Doing exactly what we were doing 12 months ago. Start the same old machines, do the same old boring job. Yeah, but same rotten money. Yeah, nothing changes around here, that's for sure. You want to try telling Baldwin that? Right. Oh, yeah, I wasn't thinking. There has been a lot of changes this last 12 months, though, hasn't there? I mean, this time last year, I did no Dom. Beer ain't got a mug stopping. Then there's her and that Curly Watts. Yeah. What about me and Curly Watts? Well, you weren't going out with him this time last year, were you? And who says I'm going out with him now? I don't know what you were seeing him, you know, honest to know. He's different to other lads, isn't he? Oh, I'll give you that. It's a thinker. It's considerate. He's uh, dead boring. He's not dead boring. Well, whatever turns you on, I suppose. <laughs> but it strikes me as having as much life in him as a wet sand. Oh, yeah, well, you don't know him like I do, do oh, you? Emily! Baldwin not coming in this morning, then? We'll be in later, Vivian. Hey, sounds like he had a good night last night. For your information, he happens to have a business meeting this morning. Are you happy now, Vera? Do you want to know what he had for his breakfast? Look, I would only ask him, weren't I? Well, if you're that keen to see him, I should think he'll be here about 11. Oh, and he'll okay. expect you to be well on with this order by then. So if I were you, I'd get on with it. Right, come on. You heard what she said. Last thing we want to do is start New Year off on the wrong side of Baldwin. If he comes in here breathing fire and brimstone, he finds we haven't done it south. All right, you've made your point. Hey, you were right, kid. No, it does change round, eh? Oh, hang on, Mrs. Jeffries. Yes. I'll open the door for you. There you go. Bye-bye, now. Ah, oh, thanks, kind sir. Ah, oh, come on. You've had your skates on, haven't you? Well, you did say you wanted to get away, so... Aye, I know, but you're time to have your dinner. Oh, we've had it on this. I'll take this and all, Alpha. Yeah, all right, then. Uh, well, if you're quite sure, I might as well get myself off, then. Yeah, me and I'll want to nip next door before I go back to work. How's it going in there, Kev? Slow. Oh. But it'll be worth it. It'll be like a little palace, that place, when it's all finished. <laughs> hey, look, I don't want to seem as if I'm getting on you all the time, but, you know, as I said before, it's not your house yet, is it? Yeah, but it's only a matter of time. I mean, we put in the mortgage application and... Yes, it... I know that, love, you see, but legally... Well, I mean, if Hilda doesn't mind, I mean, it is her yeah. house. She doesn't. And then it all would only taken the kitchen cupboards out to start with. Yeah, and if we'd waited till everything had gone through before we'd started, we'd be lucky to get in before next Christmas. All right, all right, I'm outgunned. I just wanted to tell you about the legal situation, that's all. And you have done, love, at least a dozen times. Yeah. Now, come on, let's go. Yeah, we won't be very long, love. We'll, we'll just have something to eat quickly and then we'll go straight down to cash and carry. Oh, that's Cheers. Well, I think it's sickening for some of my staff. Baldwin. Well, they don't come in till gone 11, and for all notice, it takes him out and not be there. That's just right, you know. He hasn't cracked the whip once all morning, and it's not like him in that. Look, if Baldwin wants to give us a cushy ride for a couple of days, well, don't knock it. After I've been through, my mother and our Jack, I could do it taking it easy. Yeah. He does seem to have summit on his mind, that's for sure. Hey, you don't think that missus of his is coming back, do you? No chance. <laughs> Well, cos we has got a point. Whatever it is that's keeping Baldwin off our backs, let's count as blessings while we can. Yeah. Which we won't be doing for much longer if we don't get back. Hey, no. Oh, there we go, son. Uh, see you, lovey. Ciao, lovey. Things settling down at home, are they, Jacko? Eh? 
That touching little exchange between you and your lady wife. Not exactly spitting fire, were you? Well, what's the flaming you? She has made it quite clear her mother is going to stop on Raru. Come hell or high water. It's like banging me head against the brick wall, isn't it? Not like you, that Jacko. Giving up the unequal struggle. I always had you down as the champion of lost causes. I'm giving up nothing. I'm just being realistic. All oh, right, you wait till she steps out of line, though. I mean, on the outside, I might look all calm and laid back. But on the inside, I'm like a coiled... Spring? Ready to unleash myself the minute she steps out of line. Oh. Hey, and Vera reckoned Amy was growing on you. Oh, like a flaming boil. As long as that woman is under my roof with her annoying habits. Annoying habits? Like what? Breathing, for one. Yes, lovey. Oh, Alan, uh, just the fellow I wanted to see. Me? Yes, it's about this French lad, you know, the frog. Oh, him, yeah. Yes, well, I just wanted you to know that we have got his room ready, and uh, naturally, in the interests of Entente Cordial, we want to make his stay a pleasant and happy one. He's got a lot of national pride, has my Alan? Uh, exactly. Well, there's no need to go to too much trouble, you know. Oh, it's no trouble, no trouble, believe me, Alan. I mean, we like to think all our guests are comfortable, of course, but with him coming from overseas, you know, uh, across La Manche, as it were, <laughs> well, I just wanted to assure you that we've made that little bit of extra effort, which we hope will make the difference between just a pleasant stay and a memorable one. If you say so. Yeah, I do. <laughs> what exactly does that mean? An extra two quid a night. Actually, we've pushed the boat out and we've got him something special for his breakfast, you know, in keeping with his mode of life. <laughs> Croissants. And that very expensive continental roast coffee they seem to go mad about over Wait, there. Why are you telling me this? <clears throat> Aren't you bothered? About what? What about the, ex the increase in tariff? Well, I'm not picking up the tab, am I? It's him. And from what I hear, he can afford it. And if he's as starry-eyed about our Jenny as he was the last time, he could charge him £40 a night and he wouldn't even notice. Don't even think about it. Oh, uh, well, uh, Emily? Emily, this can't be right. What's that? Simpson's order. Oh, it is, I'm sure you. I checked it myself with Mr. Baldwin this morning. But I thought he was on about to up and it'd be 50%. Oh, that's what I understood and I pointed that out to Mr. Baldwin. Well, what did he say? Mm, not a lot, really. Just told me to get on with it. It was nothing to do with me and then he went out again. It seemed to be miles away. What's the matter with him, Emily? I don't know, do I? He never was one to confide in me, not over business matters, and now he seems more distant than ever. Yeah, I suppose Christmas hasn't helped, being by himself. He's bound to be thinking what might have been. I don't know about that, no, he doesn't seem depressed to me, no. It seems like he just don't care anymore. Oh, I know what you mean, he's definitely got something on his mind, but it's nothing I can bring up, is it? No, no, of course it isn't. Well, if this is it, this is what we'll have to get on with. But it's not like Baldwin to let work slip through his fingers, is it? That's what happened. See? I had a distinct impression that it was there for the taking. I don't think he wanted it. Yeah. Have you lost something, Mrs. Burton? Sliced peaches. They're on the top shelf, love, over there. Ta. Right, got them. Ta. Right. Are you sure that there's nothing else? No, that's it for now, Tar, very much. Prices should charge in here. I reckon I've done very well to get this oh, book. Tar, very, very much. Mm. I'll be seeing you. where you got to. Yeah, so what time will you be here then? Oh, right, I'll see you then then. Yeah, me and all. All right then, bye bye. That was lover boy, I check it. Patrice, yeah? Is he still coming? Well, of course he's still coming. I thought he was going to ring you from Dover or something. Oh, well, he never got a chance. You see, we'd stopped to find a phone and he missed his train. Well, where is he now? He's in London. He'll be here about tea time. I see. Well, 
Honest, I don't know what you want. You didn't want me to get married, so I didn't do. I got engaged instead. You wanted me to go back to school to do my A-levels, which I have done. I thought you'd accepted the situation. Oh, I've accepted it, yeah. But I don't have to like it, do I? See you. Yeah, bye. Hello, Mr. Bradley. Is Jenny in? Yeah, she is, Lisa. Go on through. Jenny? What are you doing here? We do get dinner hours, you know. I just thought I'd come and see how my old mate Jenny was going on. To see if Patrice had landed, more like. Well, if he had, it might have saved me a journey, I suppose. Well, he's not here, is he? No, I can see that. So when are you expecting him? Well, he said he'd give me a ring when he got to Dover, didn't he, but... What? Well, he let me down over Christmas, didn't he? I mean, it might be Easter before I see him again. You lying toad. Look, Lisa, I mean, aren't this kind of a bit too far? I mean, I joke's a joke and everything, A joke? But... Is that what it is, is it? You go making up to my boyfriend. I wasn't making up to anybody. Oh, yeah. So what I saw going on between you two at that party was just my imagination, was it? It was just an innocent little kiss. That was Oh, a... yeah. So innocent that me and Gary have split up because he's got the idea that you're the best thing since pop videos. You've ruined my life, you have, Jenny Bradley. And I'm going to make good and sure that this Frenchman knows exactly what sort of cheating little sod he's got himself in with. I mean, you got a job to go to. Well, don't worry. I'm off. But I'll catch up with him sooner or later. Yeah, well, don't walk too near the edge of the pavement. Your mind might just fall back in the gutter where it came from. I'm sorry we're so late, love. Me, oh. me. And how tough can I get the chance to drag Arthur around the shops? I want to make the most of it. Yeah, well, you certainly did that, didn't you? We can't move in our house for carrier bags. You should see the stuff she's bought. She bought enough to stop the shop of her own. Oh, now, just think of all the money I've saved yeah. you. Mm, you know you'll love it. Uh. I'll have your tea ready by 5.30, OK? You should see where she carried on. You think she ain't got a thing to wear? <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mr Roberts. January sales. You only come once a year, you know. Ah, uh, then there's February sales. At March sales, <laughs> anyway. Oh, everything all right here? All quiet, was it? Yeah, well... Don't you mean well? Well, it's a very awkward situation, Mr Roberts, and... Well, I'm not 100% sure I saw what I thought I saw, cos I was serving somebody else at the time, but... I think I saw Mrs Burton put something in the bag. In the bag? Without paying for it. Without paying? Like I say, I can't be sure, because... Well, she was stood ju just here, really, and I, I was stood over there. Well, from where I was looking, it just looked like she picked up a tin of salmon. Salmon? That's right, Beth, and then put it into a bag. Well, did you not say that? Didn't you challenge her? Well, yeah, I suppose I did in a manner of speaking, because when she came over to pay for it, like, it wasn't in a wire basket. So I asked her, I said, is that all you've got, Mrs Burton? And she said it was. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr Roberts. You know, it's a really awkward situation, and, well, I don't know if there's out you can do about it, but I just thought you should know. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Bradshaw, but uh, that's a position here. I'm not accepting any new orders. No, I can't see the situation changing in the foreseeable future, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Try them by all means. Yes, if the situation changes, I will be in touch, but the way I see things at the moment, I very much doubt it. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Bradshaw. You didn't hear that conversation. So there is something going on. Nothing you should lose any sleep about. It all looks pretty ominous to me. Trust me, Emily. And I don't want any word of this getting out of the office. Especially to that lot out there. They are beginning to notice one or two things themselves. Well, let them. Just don't tell them anything else. Not for the moment, anyway. If you say so. I do. Right, well, I've got to go out for an hour. You'll probably be gone by the time I get back, but if you see a light burning here later, don't call the police. I've got some work to do. I don't look so wide. Where's he off now? Search me, I seem to be the last person to know what's going on round here these days. Well, that's an hour away for tonight. No point in working his fingers to bone, is that? Hey, Vera, look, I'm only having five minutes, aren't I? Yes, I know your five minutes I don't, don't they? There's no wonder he's turning flaming work down. Is hey. what? Forget it. He's turning work down? I don't know that for sure, do I? It's just something that... Look, will you drop it? My job is to see that you get this lot out on time, not gas to you. Come on, let's see some action. See? What did I tell you? What? 
Well, it's what's interesting us, aren't they, in this place and life? By it, that missus of his has a lot to answer for. Uh, I've been thinking of nothing but this moment since the day I went back. Oh, so have I. It has seemed so long. Well, I do think I've been feeling. Well, come on, three of you stopping. Well, I thought perhaps I had better take my case to the Rover's return. No, there's lots of time for that. Come on, I want to have a look at you first. Okay. Mm, we haven't got long. Be sure my dad will be back soon. And we've got a lot of lost time to make up for. Oh, yes, we have. I thought I'd die when you said you couldn't come for Christmas. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Really, I am. But it could not be helped. We are a very close family, as you know. And Christmas. So what did you do with yourself, then? Nothing much. No parties? Yes, one or two. But I didn't enjoy any of them. How could I? Without you, they didn't mean a thing. No. And what about you? Me? Yes, parties. Same as you, I suppose. Hey, Rod, what are we doing talking about Christmas? That's in the past, isn't it? We should be thinking about now. Oh, yes, you are right. We are together again. And that is all that matter. Right? Dead right. Hey, I love it. Hey, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, Give us a scotch, please, go on. Make it a large one. Hi, right? Mr. Baldwin. Vera? You haven't been working till this time, have you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. It's amazing what you can get through with a bit of peace and quiet. Well, how do you think we go on with our machines clattering away all day? It wasn't the machines I was thinking about, Vera. There you go. Can you join me? Oh, yeah. Go on, then. Thanks. I'll just have an orange juice. It's your New Year's resolution, then, is it? What, buying you a drink every time I come in? <laughs> no, working late. No, not really. It's just I had a few things to do, and it's easier with the girls out of the way. All right. Still, you don't want to get bogged down with my problems, do you? Why not? I spend most of my waking hours listening to everybody else's. And uh, it looks like the best offer I'm going to get tonight. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying it weren't nice, ma'am. It was. Do you know, it was a lovely surprise coming home to see tea on the table. But you shouldn't have that out your own pocket. I mean, best salmon's not cheap, is it? Lovely tasting, though, weren't it? With them spuds and butter. Why, was that all right? <laughs> well, what's you on about, then? Now, is there out special you want tomorrow? Do you want another drink, you two? Uh, well, yeah, if you're asking. Yeah. I'm asking, yes, buying, no. No, I didn't think you would be. Anyway, it's time we're getting a crossroad. I'm not so that corner yet, Vera. <laughs> Look, you'll put your money away, yo. We spent enough on us for one day. Right, come on. I'll see you later. Right. Right, well. Uh, night, Mr. Baldwin. Oh, night, Vera. Uh, don't overdo it now. Want you up bright and early in the morning. Yeah, I bet you do. Thank you. Another? Uh, no, thanks. Didn't really come in for a drink. No, but we'll be pleased to hear that. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, I came in for a bit of company. I've been cooped up over there all night, and the thought of going back to that empty flat, well... Yeah, I do know what you mean. Yeah, good well, sure you do. All quiet, love. Yeah, like the grey. Well, you can slope off if you like. Alec will be back in a minute, and I've got Jacko. Are you sure? Well, if it can make you any happier, I can send Jacko packing. Don't bother. Thanks, there. I'll just go and ring for my taxi. Now, you sure you don't want another one for again? No, uh, no thanks. Look, there's no need to get a taxi. Not with you? Well, I can drop you off, can't I? Is that your way? No, not really. I wanted to pop into a Chinese anyway. Oh, now there's a belcher on the corner of our road. Right, that's settled then. <laughs> I'll get my coat. Right. Stop it, stop it. They'll be gone in a minute. <laughs> right, you two. We're off to Rovers. See you later. All right, what time shall I tell Alec to expect you? Oh, don't worry. He'll be in before closing time. Well, I'll just make sure he is, that's all. Come on. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh, I thought they would never go. Yeah, they did drag it out a bit, didn't they? Yes, I have been here nearly four hours, and we have hardly had a minute alone. Well, we have now. And it's going to be worth waiting for, I promise you. <sighs> a 
I've missed you so much, Jenny. I can't begin to tell you. Me too. I just wish it could be like this forever, just the two of us. I don't know how I'm going to get through two years without you. I know. I've been thinking of nothing else since I returned home. It was a mistake, Jenny. What was? To become engaged as we did. You mean you don't want to be engaged to me? No. I mean that I've not been able to think of anyone else but you since I returned home. And that I'm more sure than ever that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And when I say that it was a mistake, I mean that I don't want to wait for two years before we can marry. I can't wait for two years. I want you now. I want to be with you for always, whatever my parents may say or think. I love you, Ginny. And I just want us to be married as soon as we can. And I only hope that you feel the same way about me. I've uh, got a drop of scotch in if you'd rather have that. No, that's fine. You sure? Positive. And thanks. <laughs> what for? Well, tonight, your company. I could say the same to you. Do you know, I haven't felt so relaxed since... I can't remember. It's hardly surprising, really, is it? After what you've been through. Yeah, well, that's water under the bridge now, isn't it? There's no chance of... Nope, it's over. Finished. Kaput. But I have learned to come to terms with it. I can't say it's been easy, because uh, it hasn't. So where'd you go from here? Well, there's only one way to go when you hit rock bottom, isn't there? And that's up again. That's the way I am. It's the only way I know. I'm a survivor, Gloria. I always have been. Till I met Susan, and I'm... <laughs> I sort of caved in. I thought to myself, right, this is it. You've got to compromise now. You, someone else you've got to think about. Well, I compromised all right, didn't I, with my business. Look where it got me. Still, it's all behind me now. I've only got myself to think about. Well, I wish you luck. Thanks. But I think you make your own luck in this world. And that's exactly what I'm going to do from now on. So I take it you weren't working late tonight because you had nothing better to do? Oh, no. No, I've got big plans for that place over there. Same as I have for the rest of my life. I can see where I'm going again. Do you know, I haven't been able to say that for a couple of years. Come on, then. What's so funny? No, nothing really. It's just some of your girls reckon you're losing your grip. Got no interest in the place anymore. Well, they're going to be in for quite a surprise, aren't they? Morning, Amy. Oh, Jack! Nearly frightened me to death. I should be so lucky, eh? And you were going to have to get up a lot earlier in the morning, you know, if you think you're going to fool Alec Gilroy with that. What? Squirting the furniture polish about as if it was a flipping prize play or something. He's not as stupid as he looks, you know, Alec. I'll tell him you said that, shall I? If you like. You must know. I was testing it, that's all. Oh, we'll take a little bit of advice from somebody who knows, will you, and try testing it on a couple of them tables there. We haven't got all time to read flaming papers, you know. Morning. Morning. Uh, treat. Yes. Uh, nothing wrong with it, was there? Your breakfast? Oh, of course not. Only you didn't seem to eat very much. And I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not very hungry this morning. I see. Goodbye. Yes, all right. All right. Yeah. You know what's wrong with him, don't you? Eh? In love, isn't he? I don't see why that shouldn't stop him eating good food. It never did with me. No, me. No, I don't suppose it did with you too. Keeping you busy, are we, Jack? Just having a look at today's start, Sally, before I kind of fling myself into action, like. I see. It doesn't say anything in there, does it, about how we should buckle down to today's tasks with energy and enthusiasm, just in case somebody in a position of authority starts to wonder what the hell is paying us for. So have you told them yet? Uh, well, not yet. I thought it Sorry to love you and leave you, Patrice, but uh, we're running a bit late this morning. Come on, Bradley. I'm going. Nearly dinner time. Nice, I'm ready. Hello, Patrice. You're an early bird. Yes. Uh, well, 
There was something I wanted to talk to you about. Can't it wait till tonight? No, I think it would be better now. Okay, go on then, well. Well, I have been doing a lot of thinking since I was last over about Jenny and me. And I know what I've said about being prepared to wait to get married, but now I don't know if I am. What exactly is that supposed to mean? I suppose it means that we want to get married sooner than that. In fact, right away. What? Well, what the X brought this on all of a sudden? Well, he's just told you, hasn't he? He's been doing a lot of thinking about it. Well, not enough as far as I'm concerned. You can't be serious. Yes, I am serious. Dad, can you understand? We happen to be in love. What the hell has that got to do with anything? You're 16 years old, for yeah, God's sake. Don't drag that again. I can, I can always leave school. Oh, my dead buddy, you will. Well, it's my life. No, it isn't. Not yet. Not legally. It's the most stupid thing I've ever heard of. And there's no point in continuing this conversation because there is no way I will agree to you two getting married yet. Not for a couple of years at least. And that, as far as I'm concerned, is that, okay? Come on, love. I knew that's what he'd say. I just knew it. in broad daylight at this unearthly hour. Would you believe the rising price in frozen pasties? Not easily, no, but go on. Well, I've just been round to that freezer place in Bessemer Street to find out why it is their pasties are going a penny a bite cheaper than the ones we buy. And did you? Well, of course I did, love. Theirs are about half a stone lighter and most of that's pastry. I see. <laughs> then I was passing, as they say, and it suddenly swept over me, this irresistible urge. To do what? See me still in me filth? No, love, for a cup of coffee. And while you were at it, to find out what happened last night, right? Right. There's no fooling you modern missus, is there? Not with something as corny as this pasty story, no. No, it wasn't one of my better ones, really, that was it. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. So, go on. Where did you two end up last night? This place of yours. I brought him back here. And? We talked. Well, of course you did, Gloria, love. Even Mike Baldwin isn't completely crude about these sort of things. After you talk, then what? We just talked. That was all, for hours. Well... He did, anyway. What about, for God's sake? His plans. Who for you? The factory. No, I mean, he just seemed full of all these new ideas he'd had for it. In fact, I suppose it wasn't all that flattering, really. How do you mean? Well, I just got the impression that he had all these plans on his mind and he just had to talk to somebody about them. Ah, yeah. That's a new line for Mike. I'll give him that. Come up to my place sometime and I'll show you my floor plans. <laughs> That's so romantic, it's practically flipping Russian, is that? What did he work his way around to later? Tractors? And he just went on. Honest? Honest. What were these plans that wiped all mucky thoughts right out of his head? Well, I couldn't tell you that, but... You couldn't? No. Well, I mean, what he was telling me was said in confidence, wasn't it? Almost certainly, love. But then again, we've never let a little thing like that stop us before, have we? Oh, no, no, but like I say, there's more to life than possession. Especially at young Sally and Kevin's age. I mean, there they are, buying their own house. Well, what's wrong with that? It makes a sight more sense than shelling out rent to Alfred Roberts, doesn't it? Well, I'm not saying it doesn't. But it'll not stop there, you know, if I know her. I mean, they're already ripping out the kitchen. And it'll be decorating, carpets, curtains, stereo, microwave. When me and our Jack were that age, we were thankful to have a roof over his head. When you were that age, things were different, weren't they? I mean, it won't happen over very long for one thing. Oh, still him in there, Ralph. <laughs> Well, I still say there's more to life than that. I mean, at their age, where's the point in tying all your money up into one thing? They should be out enjoying themselves while they're still young. Like I say, there's more to life than possessions. What, uh, this section here, do you mean? Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Come over here, mate. Uh, hey, you'll see when it's at home. Some sort of engineer, I suppose. You should fix my machine any time. Well, it don't look like an engineer to me. Why? What do engineers look like? Well, for starters, they have muck under the fingernails, don't they? Oh, uh, Emily Bishop, Barry Oldfield. Oh, hello. Hello, Lee. I've asked Barry to look over the place, make sure we're making use of all the space we've got available. So we'll probably be popping up in all sorts of odd places in the next couple of days. Oh, right. Emily, why don't you go and make us some coffee, eh? Um, Make it with your own lily white hands, not out of that infernal machine. Yes, of course. And Emily, if you could bring it back in, say, a quarter of an hour, all right? Oh, right. 
Now then, where were we? Is it, Mrs. Burton? Well, put it this way, it's got to be, hasn't it, love? Right. I'll keep it all right, is it? Seems to be, yeah. Oh, that's good. Just two pounds, right? Eh? Yeah? Two pounds. Um, yeah, that's right, yeah. That's all. Not very much. Bye. Bye. <coughs> Sally, what on earth's going on? Thieving, Mrs. Roberts, that's what's going on. Eh? Well, go on, smell it. We'll bite you. Be nice. Yeah, well, don't scold yourself for burning up with enthusiasm, will you? I've said it's very nice, really. What more do you want? A public vote of confidence? Oh. Hey! What? Do you think? What else? <laughs> He's getting a bit frisky, isn't he? Oh? You're a jack by you, French perfume. What well, about been a day when our jack puts his hand in his pocket to buy me a bottle of scent? Not with my match, like. Just turned up with it, you know, from shopping yesterday. Oh, that's nice, love. Pressed me out, though, really, yeah. What does? What way she keeps turning up with stuff? You know, it's as if she can't do enough to show, her, show how grateful she is for sticking her in line. Ah. Oh. Dead bad, that, though, isn't it? Mm. Well, say something, Rita, even if it's only that you think I'm wrong. Of course I don't think you're wrong. Well, what, then? I just hope they don't go doing something stupid, that's all. Like what? Well, like, for instance, catching the next plane to France, together. They won't do that. You're that confident, are you? Do you think they will? I honestly don't know. But just in case the idea has crossed somebody's mind, I just don't think we can leave things as they've been left, that's all. Hey, is there still no sign of him? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Perhaps we should phone him. Well, stop worrying. He'll be here. Wait for the guys to come from the mortgage place, surveying the house for us. Yeah, I see. Something for you to look forward to, eh, Patrice, one of these fine days? I suppose so. <laughs> Mr. Webster? No, uh, no, I'm Mr. Webster. Yeah, and I'm Mrs. Webster. Right, sorry I'm late. If I had 25 hours in the day at the moment, it still wouldn't be enough. Shall we go in? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll see you later. Bye, Patrice. Bye. Hello. Hello. You're Patrice, right? Yes, that's right. I'm Lisa. I'm a friend of Jenny's. Ah, pleased to meet you. Yeah, me and all. So now, what are you telling me? You stood here like a pair of props and let that thieving old bat walk out with a jar of my best coffee. Well, what did you want me to do? Take her with a flying tackle just as she was leaving? You could have challenged her at least. Oh, wow, she's an old woman, for God's sake. She might be old. She's not flipping gaga. Far from it. Well, before we realised what were going on, she were out the shop, uh. weren't you? Any road. You could have warned me. Warned you? She nicked so much yesterday, right? Yeah, well, that was different, wasn't it? Why different? Because Sally wasn't sure she'd seen her, but today she actually saw a text something. Isn't that right? Well, I suppose so. What do you mean, suppose so? What are you saying now? It, it might have been a mistake, after oh, all. It's not. I saw her put a jar of coffee in her bag, but, yeah. well, she just might not have been thinking. What, two days running? Come on. Mr. Roberts, all I am around here is a shop assistant. I am not a store detective. All oh, right, now, come on. When all's said and done, it's only a jar of flaming coffee. So what are you saying now? Just forget all about it. Let her help herself. No, that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's not worth dropping dead about. Well, what do you flipping expect? I, I'm telling you, I'll swing for them bloody duckers one of these. Well, days. I am telling you, if you let your blood pressure go up much more, then you won't need to bother. Now, please, will you calm down a bit, all right? 
Well, shall I put the kettle on? Oh, do you know, that's the best suggestion I've heard all afternoon. We'll have a nice cup of coffee. Oh! <laughs> what else did she say, then? Just that you'd stolen her boyfriend and we're still seeing him. The bitch! Well, she's lying through her Well, you don't believe her, do you? It's just that... Well, just what? Why would a friend make up such a story? A friend? She's no friend of mine. All she is, she's a dirty-minded, vindictive little mixer, and she's not going to be happy till she's seen us broken up. But why? Because she's jealous, isn't she? Because I've got you and she's got nobody. Uh -huh. Not now. So her and this Gary had really broken up then? Well, yeah, they have, as a matter of fact, but that's got nothing to do with me. Look, there was this party over Christmas, right? I mean, you know, we were all there, you know, me, Lisa, and this Gary. Party? Yeah. Well, you know, pretty soon it comes obvious to everybody that he's dead bored with this Lisa, you see. So the next thing is, he makes his pass at me. And? No, well, I tell him to get lost, of course. And that's all? Well, yeah. I mean, he's all right, Gary. He's a dead nice lad, really. He's too nice for her, any Rod? So you see now, she has to try and find some way to save some face, doesn't she? Because he's chucked her. So she's going round blaming me, isn't she? And that's all there was to it, honestly. Well, you do, you do believe me, don't you, Patrice? Well, if that's what you say, of course, I believe you. You're not just saying that? Of course not. Are you sure? Positive. Good. Because if anything did come between us, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably kill myself or something. Oh, no. Don't say things like that. Don't ever say things like that. Oh. If you had any idea, any idea how much I love you. Or perhaps it's some sort of time and motion study, man. Well, it better not come near me with a stopwatch. I'll tell him where to stick it. <laughs> well, perhaps somebody ought to go in and ask Balbin straight out, instead of sitting here speculating. Yeah, perhaps somebody should, Ida. <coughs> Volunteering, are you? Well, I might just do that if nobody else has got any guts. And uh, you don't anticipate any problems out there, then? Out where? Out there. That lot, do you mean? Nah, <laughs> pussycats, a lot of them, mate. All me our no claws. Don't you worry about them, my son. You provide the asylum, I'll deal with the inmates. Uh, you are right, Ida? I think he's coming out. Yeah, you'll get in there, Ida, love. Give him it straight, right yeah. between the eyes. Right, well, I'll uh, see you next week, mate. <laughs> right, then. Bye. See ya. Ida. Come on. Come on, then I will. <laughs> yes, Ida. Oh, I've heard rumours are going to be some changes it wouldn't round here. You know, I've heard that too. Where do these stories come from, eh? Well, there's any truth in it. Uh, as a matter of fact, yes, actually. Oh, yes. And now whether these changes are going to affect us a lot, then? Oh, pretty considerably, I should think. Well, don't you think we had a right to be consulted? Not particularly, no. But if you feel that strongly about it, organise a meeting. I'll make a point of being there. Tell you and the rest of the brothers all about it. Well, we went far. Any time you like, as long as it's on your time. Not mine now, if you'll excuse me. Got another meeting to go to. It's all go, isn't it? Oh. Hello. Hi. Hi. We're just going to the papers. Um, just a minute. I think before you go anywhere, we need to have another little chat, don't we? Really? I thought we'd said all there was to be said. Well, I haven't. So you can stop glaring at me, sit yourself down and listen for once, OK? Come on. <clears throat> um. Now then, uh, <clears throat> Rita and I are just as keen as you are to see you two married. Well then. But not yet. And certainly not with Patrice here facing two years in the Foreign Legion or whatever it is, and you with A-levels staring you in the face. I am sick to death of hearing about my A-levels. What good are A-levels going to do me when I'm married, for God's sake? Well, for starters, they'll help you to get a job, which you're certainly going to need when you two set up home together. Look, Jenny, I think what your dad's trying to say, if you'll just give him a chance, is that we both know how you two feel about one another, hard though you may find that to believe. And we know how hard it is for you to have to wait. We do. Only love just isn't enough in this day and age, unfortunately. 
It won't put bread on the table or a roof over your heads. And I suppose air levels will. They'll help. And when you're looking for a job, you need all the help you can get in this day and age, believe you me. Look, I'm not trying to split you two up. <laughs> I'm just trying to stop you rushing into this marriage. Because in my opinion, you're not ready for it yet. Not by a long chalk. Not at 16. Come on, love. Not oh, here we go again. Will you listen for a minute? Marriage is a big enough step in anybody's life, and I just don't think you've given it enough thought. All I'm trying to do is to stop you rushing into something that you might regret for the rest of your lives. I mean, what kind of marriage are you going to have anyway for the next two years? With Patrice tied up with national service, eh? You're engaged, aren't you? Well, that means you can see each other as often as you're able. And then, after two years, if you still feel the same way about each other, believe me, I will be the first to give you my blessing. Because you'll be starting out as two mature people with your whole lives in front of you, together. Your dad's right, Jenny. And that's all I've got to say, really. Now, I know that you could just take it into your heads to ignore our feelings and do the really stupid thing and go running off somewhere together. And if you did, quite frankly, there's not a lot we could do about it. But I hope you won't. I hope you'll think about it carefully and do the sensible thing. And if you think that I've been saying all this because I want to get at you, you couldn't be more wrong, love. I've said it because I care about you. Both of you. Probably more than you'll ever realise. So he really gave you no idea then? Hmm? I mean, how much he thought the house were worth? Well, I tried to work my way around to it, you know, just as he was leaving. And? And he pointed out to me that it was just a building society saw there, so... Just got to wait and see then, have you? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Mm -hmm. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, yeah, right, love. love. Mr. Roberts, I'm dead sorry. I really am, you know, about that jar of coffee. Oh, look, don't worry about it. It wasn't your fault. Anyway, next time we'll be ready for her, won't we? So? So what? So what do you think? Well, what do you think? Well, I think your father is right about one thing. When he said that if we just take off, as he said, there will not be a lot he could do about it. No. We won't be able to have a proper wedding, would we? Not without his permission. Would it matter to you? I think it might. I see. I wouldn't have thought it would. Not till just now. Not till what my dad just said. I don't understand. What me and you've got going is so good. I just don't want to spoil it. I want me and you to live happily ever after. <laughs> I mean, that's what it's supposed to be all about, isn't it? So, so where is it then, Emily? It? I mean, where are here? When by rights, we should be at home putting tea on the table. Yes. So why ain't here then? I'm sure it won't be a minute, Vera. Oh, you said that five minutes since, didn't you? Yeah, perhaps yes. you should organise a sing song or something to oh. pass the time. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm going if you don't oh, turn up. Right then, ladies, where were we? Well, we were here. Where were you? All right, well, the bottom line is that uh, this little enterprise of ours hasn't been doing so good in the last 12 months. Oh, no. here we go. And the good news is, despite that fact, I'm not thinking of closing the place down. Oh, well, thanks a oh. bunch. Not yet, anyway. No, we're going to have one last crack at it by switching production. Switching production? To what? Curtains. Well, I can't say any future in that denim curtains. Not unless the whole country's gone beatnik or something. Not denim curtains, Vera, just curtains. Now, there is one vital important difference between turning out curtains and turning out jeans. Uh, well, there's two, actually. The first one being that uh, we won't have the same sort of competition. Well, what's the second difference? Well, we're saving overheads. What was overheads? Well, mine. Oh. I mean, what I'll be getting is better value per unit. Might even start to make a profit. Encourage me to keep this place open. Well, if that's the good news, what's the bad news? Ah, well, the bad news is that uh, the going rate for the job, on the face of it, 
it's going to be less. You no, no, but you can take a lot more home if you are prepared to earn it. Less. And what about them that aren't prepared to earn it, as you call it? Well, let's put it another way. Work every hour God sends. Because that's what you're on about, isn't it? Us working as guts out to earn all this wonderful extra money you're yeah. on about. Well, I thought that was obvious, Ida. Even to you. This is still a free country. <laughs> And those of you that don't like the New Deal can exercise their democratic right and leave. As simple as that. Now, Mum, you won't forget the bits of shopping, will you? Look, here's cash. And for Pete's sake, don't forget his Lordship shaving cream. Shaving cream? What's wrong with soap? Makes you wonder. I happen. Anyway, I'd best be off. Uh, shouldn't you be shifting yourself? Oh, mop and bucket can wait. Rumors won't run away. I'll be trotting down once I've made my selection. Well, I'd best be off then. Though God knows what's waiting for us in that factory baldry and these new plans of his. What a flaming house. No water, no bog roll, no nout. Oh, give it a rest, you mardy pan. Oh, go on, you scarper. I don't suppose you've done out about my flippy shaving cream, have you? No, no. Too bound up with his factory nonsense. Great change to curtains. Oh, why it's into technology. I should flaming go. Oh. Stop your screaming and stamping. You're like a big soft kid. Give me shaving stuff you want, buggers the brass. Excuse me, did somebody speak? We got a parrot. There's somebody using the chainsaw. Are you deaf as well as daft? Our Vera has got enough on her plate. If you leave me a quid, I'll see what I can do. Oh, well, it's not very much. I shall go and finish my toilet. And find you the brass. Daft as a brush. You can't get rolls right around here, can you? Rolls? Oh, oh aye, but there's a little place in there. Pass mm -hmm. Yeah, see you at dinner time. I'll give you a roll. Oh, <laughs> try corner shop, love. I can recommend it. Oh, tough. Gary Grimshaw, what are you doing around here? Oh, I'm across the factory. Me and my mate are fixing machines up. I thought I might run into you, like. Well, you have done then, haven't you? I, I worked till Sunday. Double time. So, uh, I'm flush. Well, great. You can buy Lisa something then, can't you? I'd rather take you out. I'm engaged, Gary. Yeah, you told me. At Christmas. Well, it were a turn on. I'd never kissed an engaged girl before. Yeah, well, Christmas was a one off. Didn't feel like that to me. Well, I'm sorry. There's nothing doing. Hey, listen. I know he's over, this Patrice. And I know Lisa blabbed him about us. I'm surprised he hadn't chucked you. Well, he hasn't. No thanks to her. Any road, it's none of your business. Hey, Jen! Oh, them kisses, they were super league. I can still feel them somewhere there in my toes. If he hadn't chucked you, you ought to chuck him. Oh, how fresh to report. Yes, and it's all grim. Four part-timers have been laid off, all from cutting rooms. Well, this won't stop him. Oh, what do you expect? Curtains don't need much cutting, do they? Uh, never mind. Listen, he won't get away with this, you know, if our union had any muscle. Well, then part-timers wouldn't join, would they? Well, I think he's boxing very clever, Bob, with myself. I mean, where are these curtains? I thought we'd be cracking on the first thing this morning. We're all geared up, aren't we? Hey, blue eyes, come here. All this gear, is it for curtains? Oh, don't ask me. I just tighten nuts and go for pies. Oh, oh Anne, you up front. Does your mum know you're out? Hey, you lot, hands off. This lad's got work to do. Machine fitters don't come cheap. Oh, is that why you've got all these clowns? Uh, what's Foreman's name? Fred Carno. <coughs> and rough edges on this cock up. We call it all get a serious injury. Look, seriously, Mr. Baldwin, this switch to curtains, when can we expect it? Yeah, and what's the rate? If you're gonna cut basic, it's gonna make a difference. Do me a favour, ladies. Give me a bit of credit for having brains, will you? No, there is a master plan. And believe you me, everything is going according to blueprint. Mrs. Bishop is working out the basic scales, which have to be balanced against the piecework opportunities. I want you to look in this. In the words of Chairman Mao, what? that's a, 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 a great leap forward. Huh. Well, I can't see curtains, Mr. Baldwin. I can't see there's a demand. I mean, it's all blinds and drapes these days. Oh, well, thank you for the market research. Now, I understand we've got a few more denim orders to get out. So let's get them out. And when it's time for curtains, you'll be told. Curtains. He just <laughs> loves that word, doesn't he? Curtains. He really rolls it round his tongue, doesn't he? 
face it. He's enjoying himself. He's having a ball. We're just two of us. Hey, up, man. I've just had a thought, that chairman now. They were a chink, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, well, they had another say in them chinks. Give them rice. Oh. Listen, if you're there, throw money, not stretching. I might be able to push a few on his quid your way. You know, strictly on the QT, like. Oh, go on, I'm interested. Oh. You know I'm planning to buy Hilda's house, don't you? Oh, I, uh, I had heard. I've bolted you up his assets. Well, the thing is, I've asked for a little bit extra then and on the loan. You know, for improvements, like. I mean, it's not technically through yet, like, but it's brass in a bank, really. Uh, you fought with jobs, you're the cream, aren't you, Nick? Well, hang about. Do you fancy earning a quick tenner, or would you rather go home and press your banner? Oh, I'd sooner earn a quick tenner, please, right, sir. then. Well, I've already got a kitchen strip, but I want all the rough work doing before I start moving anything in. Uh -huh. So if you could give us a day on the living room ceiling. I'll give it an afternoon, yeah. Maybe even two, but I've got my revolution to start, mm, you know. You only need stripping. You know, all the old paper. Uh -huh. Get it ready for the craftsman to operate. Oh, don't worry, I know my place. I'd touch me fall like if I've got one. Yeah. So, uh, one day next Next week. Next week? Oh, do me a favour, and I'm, I'm an hour man. It's either this afternoon or it's no deal. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that'll be alright. Oh, Sam. Oh, that's a contract then, isn't it? Listen, how about a fiver now, and I'll bring my own scraper. A fiver? I'm supposing that's You're a bit before your time, if I might say so, Michael. In one of those mornings. Give us a squash, darling, make it a double. Creditors mobbing the place, the what? The workforce, so called, brewing for trouble. You're an early bird. Ah, oh, well, it's those eyes, isn't it? A man could let his business go to pop, but what the hell? Listen, if you're not doing anything tonight, I'm first on the list. I'm not, and you're on. Cheers. Yeah, well. Mm. Hello. Mm -hmm. I was never one to play hard to get. But don't you think you're jumping the blocks a bit? I don't think so. After all, we have been introduced. Don't you go giving us a bad name. You worry about your name, Bet. Let me worry about mine. Hey, yeah. Uh... Make a very nice couple, don't we? Absolutely. A picture no artist could paint. Mind you, he'll be a very lucky man if he can catch our glow. He's caught her, I'd say. She'll be a damn sight luckier if she catches him. Well, he's up for grabs, I suppose. Back on the monkey run, as you might say. Thanks for the information. I haven't tumbled. How would I survive my sweet in this jungle without your nouse? I'd be thinking coconuts for cough drops. She looks a bit put out this afternoon, Matt. What is it, sir? Close earrings, is it? She's a creature of moods, my wife, Jack. A creature of many and manifold moods. Like our bug. We'll flush some days, others, you're in floods. Nice timing. Are you going home or heading for the rovers? Seeing as I've got company, I'll be a devil. To be honest, I could use a bit of a stiffener. I think it's going to be war this afternoon. Mm. I haven't heard that on the news. Oh, it isn't funny, Mavis. I wish it were. Season you pay rates. I've just had to give the girls a fact sheet. They've called a meeting. I escaped before I was lynched. But if Alan were to agree, what is the difficulty? He won't agree. But if he did? I don't think we should pressure him. It's not fair. Fair? Who cares? We are in love. I know. And it's magic. Time flies, you know. I mean, two years is nothing. Oh, we'll have visits all weeks. I, uh, I see. I understand. I'm for holidays. Letters, phone calls, visits. I'm the boyfriend from Paris. Yeah. Go green, Lisa. Next year, the model will be from Rome. Patrice, I do love you. Passionately. But sometimes you can be so stupid. Is bothering you, Jen? Is he having a go? What do you want? Who is he? He's nobody. And I'm not arguing in the street. I'll see you in the house after school. What's your name? Gary. And it's out to you. It's 20%. As basic rates down 20%. We'll have to work like flaming coolest to make that up. Well, he is quoting Chairman now, isn't he? What he really wants is a sweatshop. My uncle's got some bed place. It's called a sweatshop. Well, what's that got to do with price of eggs? Crimes, you can't make an observation. Well, you're not trying to tell me you're happy with this try on, are you? Well, it depends. I mean, if the piece works there. Piece? Don't mention piece work. That's fatal, that. We won't have time for a natter, a crafty fag. It'll be grab, grab, grab. Hey, hey, calm down. There's no point squabbling amongst the souls. We've got to be united on this. 
Well, you have a lot to say for yourself, have you? Come on, give us a ruling. Oh, I'll give you a ruling. Union won't wear this. We'll get on the blower then and get the area fella down. We've got to show Bob Winner's strength. I'd be wasting my time, he wouldn't come. Oh, what do we pay our subs for then? Subs? You must be joking when did you lot last pay subs? Her arrears go back to Kia, are they? Well, if you haven't been doing collecting either. I am not running after you lot. I never want a bit shop steward anyway. Mm. Well, to hell with Union then. We'll form a work committee. Well, I'm not joining. I'm soldiering on. I'll see how these curtains work out. Well, I still think best road is to bargain. Hey, well, now's your chance. So you're going to tell him. Stand back. Uh, Mr. Baldwin? Yeah? Um, Vera and myself, we've uh, a bit confused over these pay rates, you know, so if you've just got a sec... We'll... Well, I haven't. Good almighty. Well, the ignorant pig. Well, that does it. That puts tin lid on things now. I've told you I'm busy. If you haven't got any work to do, clock off and go home. Good heavens. Whatever's the matter with Mr. Baldwin? <laughs> oh, well, that's fool's talking, that. But well, we're not standing for it, or this fiddle. Oh, and, uh, who oh, did the arithmetic, eh? Come on. Oh, no. Uh, do you mind? It's no use shouting at me. All I did was type it. Mr. Baldwin, it's me, Mrs. Bishop. I need your signature on these cheques. Don't open that door. He'll throw some at you. May I come in, Mr. Baldwin? Oh, for Pete's sake, all right, Emily. Get yourself in here. Hang on a minute, Emily. Uh, when you go in there, would you give him a message, please? Tell him that I, for one, I am not doing another tap until we've had a sort out. Yeah, and that goes for me and all. <laughs> Miss Moffat. Oh, right. Um, <clears throat> Audrey Love, yeah. could you check the price on the jam? Oh, leave it with me. Uh -huh. Are you should take that, are you going to nab her? Well, it depends. Can I go on? You're not doing it right. Come to branch meeting, pay your subs, and then we can fight him. Yeah, he'll pay off, you know. I can't afford it. I bought me all of this. Well, I don't know why. Your suntan seems to be lasting. Right, all you lot sitting on your hands in here. And make it snappy. Seconds out. Are you fit, kid? Right. Right, shut the door. Look, Mr. Norman, we know that we're out of order with you and it's all the wrong way. We should be doing it through the union, but you drove us to this. Yeah, we're not mugs, you know. No, we're still machinists, and this is downgrading with a vengeance. I mean, compared to garments, curtains are kids' stuff, and well, you know it. You listen to me, there's only one thing I know, and that's markets demand saleable product. It's curtains going through that machine, or it's curtains around factory. Now, take your choice. Yeah, well, we're not on a zone in this, you know. I just say no, but she's not happy. She'll be down at that union stirring it, don't you worry? Here, let's leave the union out of this. Well, that's good advice, Ivy's still consent. She knows it's survival. Now, I know the girls listen to you, Pear. You've got the common and you've got the decibel, so I'm appealing to you. See it my way. Give this switch a try. If not, I'll make you an offer. Form a cooperative and buy me out. All this could be yours at a generous discount. I will do it, Tantas. See your friendly bank manager. Get him to go through me books. Come off it, Mr. Baldwin. That's Cloud Cook all and well, you know it. Of course I do. No bank manager would lend you a penny on my last quarter's profit. As a garment factory, we are failing. Competition is crushing the life out of us. If I go to the wall, where does that leave you? Right, well, I'll leave you there, that thought. Chew it over. If you want to give me a notice, uh, there's pen and paper there. Just leave it in writing on the desk. Should be in politics, then. Yeah. Uh, what's festivals? It's how you know your sex appeal. Vera, is this really the crunch? Oh, that's better. How's this one? I must reek of school dinners. Mm. How am I now, aroma wise? You kissed him. You said nothing happened, but you kissed him. Look, for the umpteenth time, Gary's 
just a lad getting fresh, you know, taking a fancy. He pestered me, so I said, look, hands off, now doing. Stick to Lisa. Yes, after you kissed him, after you fooled around. It was Christmas, it was a party. But he works closed, next door. He's available, me in Paris. Well, Gary, on your doorstep. He's only working there temporary. Yes, he hangs about. One more kiss, my Jenny. Look, please. he's only what you call hot lips, is he? Is that ugly? I understand now. I understand why you say wait, stick to plan. Look, he said happy Christmas and I gave him a kiss. But I might as well have been kissing the postman for all it meant to me. Compared to kissing you. You taught me how to kiss, remember? We haven't got long. Rich will be in soon to start with tea. 98, Mrs. Burke. Bye, heck, it's pricey in here. The money goes nowhere. Don't blame me, I'm just a wage slave. Help yourself to a bag if you need one. Oh, I can manage these few bits. Still, if you're not charging... Hey, excuse me, but are you sure you've not forgotten anything? Oh, well, I didn't fetch a list. Now then, did I hear a say so? No, no, you got me wrong. No, I mean, uh, are you sure you've checked everything through? I mean, didn't you get some shaving mm. cream, Ducky? Don't worry, I mean, we all know how easy it is to make a mistake. Shaving cream? Yeah. Are you puddled in here? What would I be wanting with shaving cream? Well, would you mind if I look at your bag, then? Yeah, you I'm within my right. My I'm just looking for my own property. Ah, oh, look, oh, now, that is my property. Give it, give it here. You're a nothing but a thief. I got that elsewhere. You, you got it off my shelves, you mean. That is our label. Blimey, O'Reilly, what a commotion. Oh, just put it on the bill, should I? Oh, I think that's best, love, yeah. Look, Mrs. Burton, you do see it's our stock, don't you? Well, if it is, I don't know how it got in there. Well, I've got a blooming good idea. A word of warning here, Mr. Roberts. Now, I'm not wanting to stick me all in like, or, uh, and I've no axe to grind, Look, but... Look, Percy, if you don't mind, I think I can handle this myself. I don't like that word, I don't. Nobody handles me. And as for your daft shaving cream, you can keep it. I think it won't lather anymore. Here, listen, look, I can I can call the police, you know. Well, if you did, you'd be laughed at. You'd have no case. Yes. Percy, she's been caught red-handed. You've detained the lady on the premises. Now, in law, there's no presumption of theft till she's through that door and legging it up the street. This chap knows his onions. So I'll be on my way, if you'd mind shifting yourself. Yeah, well, you want I'll to... let her go. All right, I'll let you go this once. But it better not happen again. Don't worry, you won't see me in this dump again. Good. You need a book there, counsellor. Er, uh, counsellor that was, I mean. Oh, you want to get these finer points sorted out before you start throwing your weight about. Pardon? Hey. You're Gary? That's right. You'll know me next time. Why do you hang around? I'm working in there. It is allowed. You hang around after Jenny. Oh, don't talk daft. You pissed to her. Is that what she says? She wears my ring. You don't say. Well, I hadn't noticed. Maybe she takes it off for parties and such. Listen, we are engaged. Don't hang around, understand? I'm not hanging around. But if I were, I'd be entitled to. She's my girl as much as yours. You chase her. You pester her. Do I? Well, we'll see what happens when you're back in France. Oh, you're back, are you? Thought was new, there was some pitching in you. Out of that a boomerang. I don't suppose you remembered my shaving cream, did you? Are you blind? It's on side. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, I knew it was too much to ask. It's the wrong flaming brand, isn't it? I'm sorry. Beggars can't be choosers. That was all I could get. Yeah, well, I can't use this. I've always looked after my skin. I've always pampered it. Oh, get off. Looks like it's been rubbed down with sandpaper. First time I saw you with our Vera, I thought, who's that? Desperate Dan? Oh, I'll change it for us, though. I didn't get it from that, Al. I don't shop at Middens. I had to go to chemist in precinct. Oh, I cut price for it. Wear it, egg. Top of the range. Specially made for sensitive skins. Oh, well, worth giving it a try then, eh? Yeah, well, you aren't that age, aren't you? And while you're at it, you might take a peep at the price. One thirty-six. You only gave me a quid, so I'll have a light ale off you tonight. 
Well, I think you've been soft soaked. All this back to the wall talk, it's a load of flannel and you should know it. But where were you when bullets were flying, eh? Head in the trenches, that's where you were. Look, Ida, I know Bowie's tricks better than most, and I'm telling you, I don't think he's kidding. Hey, we mustn't forget there's a personal side to this. Yes, you're right. I mean, where's his missus, eh? She's jiggered off. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you something else, he could cut and run just like that if we don't play ball. By rights, he should have made us redundant. And give us his money and then set us on at a semi-skilled rate. Oh, what's this? A meeting of the Boozers and Skybers Union, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's the kid safe. Let's be having him on there. You can grin, Mr. Baldwin, but our union's beaten bigger men than you. Is that so? I'm shaking him his shoes. That Ida, she gets her mild wick. Before you order, Michael, I have to tell you, do not ask for credit as a refusal of an offence. Now, what are you on about? I have heard the jungle drum. Big, white, cheap, bald, and heat, cool, but... Oh, that's right, yeah. I'm dead in stuck. Give us one of your finest malts, make it a large one, and have one yourself. Hi, you wicked little. Where's Gloria? It's a night off. I thought you and her had plans. Do I take it you've had second thoughts? No, not at all. But I'm glad you reminded me. These things can sort of uh, slip your mind. He looks like a man on the prowl to me. There's so much about him. He's sort of hypnotic. These bits of kids don't stand a chance. What he really needs is somebody more his own size. Hey, just hang on. Hang on a second, Jack. What sort of a state do you reckon you're in? Hey, no, I'm not, oh, boss. He's just had a flipping ceiling fall in on him. That's what I've had a few fall in on me, metaphorically speaking, but I've got to think about the decor oh, in here. Oh, I thought this was a working man's pub. Hey, shut up. He's supposed to be on the dole. Oh, look, I've just been giving Kev here a lift. That's all out of the goodness of my heart. Yeah, Zelda's old ceiling. It's only held on by the paper. <laughs> paper? Paper, nicotine and chip fat. Oh, well, I'm prepared to let it go this once, but just think on in future. After 6 p.m., I expect a reasonable standard of dress and appearance in this bar. What's wrong with him? Don't worry, it's Paul that he's after. He's after banning him. Oh, how's he going to get him undressed? It's either that or get him undressed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, up, Mr. Baldwin. I like your cigar. It smells very expensive. Yes, I do like to treat myself now and then, Ida. Oh, I see. Wage cuts for us, big cigars for you. Very nice. <coughs> well, thank you for the comment. Now, do you mind if I get on with my private life? Oh, uh, well, that's what it boils down to at death. Now, come on, Ida. Don't be shy. I find this conversation riveting. Oh, well, I admit your private life's none of my business. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Well, I still think you're wrong. Us copping out because you've lost your grip. Is that the way you see it? Well, you must know this procedure's laid down. Thank you and good night. Hey. <laughs> I've got the union behind me. I'm not like this lot. Is that so? Well, with the union in your corner, you won't want me. And I always like to feel wanted. I don't get you. Don't you? Well, I'll spell it out for you. As from now, you are unemployed. And if any of your fancy friends feel like getting bolshy, their money can be in the post, along with yours. Slap it on. We don't want to be late clocking in. Hold on, we're five minutes yet. What are you worrying for? I don't want to give Baldwin an excuse for sacking me. He sat tidy just like that and he'd do the same to anybody him. Well, you know why he's now to, don't you? It's because mm. he's little. They're all the same little fellas. Well, she were in tears, you know, Ida, at their house last mm. night. Do you wonder? She's worked for him all them years. All right, I know she's giving odd arguments at all, but I mean to say... You are still sat here gassing. You want to get yourselves across that road and get clocked on before he fires a lot of you? Oh, give it a rest, Joe. It's not to do with you. Listen, I know his sort. He's just looking for somebody fire. I mean, Ida, smoke out a turn. Bang! If you not give him half a chance, you'll all be down the road with her. Well, I mean, you've changed your tone, haven't you? It's only a couple of days since you were telling us to stand up for yourself and show him where to get off. Well, you know why he's changed, don't you? It's right I'll have to tip some money up him if I'm not working. Give over. It's right. Do you know, I have a good man to tell Baldwin to stick his job. You'll have to set your stall out then, won't you? I'll keep you if I need to, but I'm telling you now, I am not keeping your mother. Hey, keep me mother out of this, you. Come on, girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. <sighs> Look, we're just off. Uh, I'll see you later, eh? Hi, I dare say. Yeah. Hey, she all right? There's no took is it? No, she's all right. She's not woke up, yes. Oh. Hey. Right, come on, Cheryl. This boy, this Gary, you are telling me that he's lying? Yes, he is. Well, he's exaggerating. He's making something out of nothing. And why should he do that? Oh, I don't know. 
Maybe he wants to split us up or something. But why would he want to do that? Well, I think he's jealous. That's why he's making all this trouble, you see. I think he fancies me. And what about you? Do you fancy him? No, I've told you. Yes, yes, you've told me, but also you kissed him. It's not like you think. He was just a friendly kiss. It was Christmas. It was a party. It's the truth, Patrice. Don't you believe me? I want to believe you. Good. That's all that matters. If you trust me. Because I trust you. Yes, but I want to believe you, but I don't know if I can, because you told me lies before. Well, only because my dad was here and Rita, and well. I just wanted to keep them out of it. Anyway, it was only a white lie. What do you mean, a white lie? Well, to avoid hurting someone. By telling them the unpleasant truth? No. Look, I love you, Patrice. Uh. Well, can't you accept that you've got nothing to worry about? This party you went to with this guy... I didn't go with him, he just happened to be yeah, there. OK, OK, all the same. You went to this party. Well, it was Christmas. And I was fed of a bean on me own. Yeah. You said you'd be here and then you didn't come. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Stay in my room all Christmas? No, I don't say that. But when you went to this party, why did you take off your ring? And tell me this, Jenny. I didn't want to lose it. So I thought it'd be safer if I left it at home. I could do with a new lavatory brush. A new lavatory brush? Well, you should have spoke up at Christmas. That's the time for presents. Unless, of course, you have a birthday coming up soon. <laughs> it's just a pleasantry, love. The old one's had it. All right, all right. You shall have a new brush and you shall go to the ball. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, try and manage a smile, will you, Amy, before you turn the beer flat? Oh, I bet you fancy a coffee. If you do, I'll make it. I just need something to wake myself up. You made a late night of it, did you? You and Mike Baldwin? Well, went into town, you know, had a meal. Ended up doing a round of the clubs. Oh, it'll we'll show you a good time, will Mike. Trouble is, there's always a bill to pay at the end of it. How do you mean? Same as any other fella. They like a return on what they pay out. Oh, I think he's very generous. Whatever else you might say about him. Oh, he's not scared of spending his money. You just keep all your chairs at home, lady, that's all I'm saying. Because he's a married man, you mean? That's all over. He's getting a divorce as soon as he can. Look, Bet, don't worry. I have been around a bit, you know. I'll make that coffee. Beautiful, that, Bet. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, really does you credit all this concern for Gloria's welfare. Is something annoying you, Tiger? Annoying me? No, 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 no. Nothing bothering me, no. Thought it might be you, feeling a bit jealous, that's all. Jealous of who? Oh, I think you know who, Gloria. I'm in a fling with Mike Baldwin. It's not me that's jealous. It's you. And I love it. The way your ears go red. The way your eyes flash. The way you have a slam in that till shut. Tiger, don't ever change. <laughs> Holy cow, stop a minute, Will. Hang on. Someone here I want you to meet. This is Mrs. Parker. She's going to be your new supervisor. That supervisor? I thought we had one, either. Now, the next few days, Mrs. Parker will be showing you how to make curtains. She'll be taking you one by one and showing you the ropes, so take notice. Because those of you who can't learn, or who are unwilling to learn, will be no good to me. Right, Mrs. Parker? They're all yours. You know what Mr. Baldwin wants? Oh, I... we know... we know that. My job is to help you do yours. We'll soon get to know each other. And I'll tell you this. If you can sew jeans, you can sew curtains. All you have to do is apply yourself. Mm. Right. I'll start by getting your names. Where you are? I'm going to see Baldwin. I'm not standing for this. Oh, watch yourself, kid. And that's what he wants. Did you know it's about this? No, I didn't. He never said a word to me. Would you mind telling me what's going on, Mr. Baldwin? What do you mean? I'm supposed to be your supervisor in that sewing room, and I have been for years as well, you know. Well, I didn't have time to tell you. Things are moving pretty fast around here. Oh, I have noticed. You just move somebody in and say, here's your new supervisor. What's wrong with me, Mr. Baldwin? I'm so worked hard enough for you. Either you were my supervisor because you knew all about making up denim, right? y Yes. We are now making up curtains. Have you ever made any? That's exactly Then that should answer I'm... all your questions. Now, if you don't mind, I'm pretty busy.
Thank you, love. Mind how you go. Man thinks he can walk all over people. Well, he'll not walk all over me. Hang on a minute, Vera. Just hang on. Your mother gave me no choice, you know. I had to look in a bag. Well, you're about one about Baldwin, is on it? Uh, what was that about the man? Oh, well, it don't matter. I mean, if you don't know, it's best not to go into it. Anyway, it's between her and me. Uh, what do you mean you were searching their bag? What's been going on? Come on, I want to know. Well, I'm surprised she didn't tell you about it herself. Mind you, I'm thinking about it. I can understand that. Do you know, I haven't got a clue what you're on about, but I'll find out. So come on, let's be having it. All right, let's keep it private, though. Hey. Look, I'm sorry, Vera, but your mother's been taking stuff off the shelves and not paying for them. Never, never in this world. I'm not making it up. We caught her at it yesterday, red-handed. What? Are you trying to say you, you think my mother's been thieving from here? You've got a grudge against our family, haven't you? Yeah, you think we're all flaming criminals, you. Yeah, just because of that trouble you had with our surrey. Look, just calm down with you, Vera. Calm down? And now you're picking on me, Mal? She's picking on me. Look, let, let's stay calm, shall we, Vera? <laughs> Young Sally. Yeah, well, I might have known she'd be involved. Sally saw your mother take a tin of salmon off the shelf. Tin of salmon? Yeah, she never paid for it, and Sally didn't like to say out about it. Then another day, she saw her take a jar of coffee. And as I say, yesterday, we caught her red-handed. Look, it's all lies. It's the truth. Now, you can't expect me to keep turning a blind eye, can you, Vera? Anyway, I've told your mother, as long as she doesn't do it again, I'll go no further. Oh, you won't, oh. will you? Well, I will accuse him, my mother, of being a thief. You... You've not heard last of this, Alf Robert! You haven't. Right, I'm off. I'll be back about three years. All right, when all the work's all over. Well, I'll be working on all. I mean, a business lunch isn't all pleasure, you know. Heck, what's Jenny Bradley doing in here? She's underage. We could lose her license with that. Don't get your boxes in a turmoil. I mean, Patrice is staying here, so that makes him a resident. Jenny's his guest. Anyway, she's only supping orange juice. So. Oh, I will make sure she gets no stronger. Shouldn't she be in school, anyway? I dare say she should. I'm not having that girl picked on. Looks like she's got trouble enough right now. You see what I think, Jenny? What I feel inside? You went to this party without your ring because you were saying I'm not engaged anymore. I'm very bored. I was angry with you. You can understand that, can't you? I was looking forward to seeing you and then you phone and say you're not coming. Well, I think you didn't care about me anymore. I mean, I, I've told you. Yeah, all right, so I was wrong. But at the time, I was upset and hurt. That's why I took my ring off. Now, you see, before you denied this, you swore that you were telling me the truth. I'm telling you the truth now. Honest. Hello, young lovers. All right. Oh, pardon me for breathing. All right, Martin. Point. Please, yes, sir. Point, please, yeah. How you doing? All right. All right. Martin's helping us with the house, you know, with all the plastering and all that. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm sure you'll make Mrs. Elton's house very nice with a bit of imagination. And a lot of sweat. Mm. It'll be great. All we've got to worry about is paying for it. Uh, I'm sure you'll get your mortgage through all right. With a very good these days, especially with first-time buyers. Yeah. You just roast this woman in and said, here's your so new supervisor. Well, at least you've still got your job. Well, I'll tell you what, if I didn't need money, I'd tell him what he can do with the job. I'm me flipping machine. If we'd have stuck together in the first place, I'd have still had a job and you'd have still been supervisor. Yeah, well, it's a bit late now. Oh, I've got Ace Vera. Hiya. I've got your locker in, all right? Where are you going? Right, lady. I've got a bone to pick for you. What's this you've been saying about my mother? Me, I haven't said anything. Don't come at you on the Alf Roberts. You're a good hiding pair of you. Hey, now, hang on here, Vera. You know what this little cow's been doing, don't you? Say my mother's a thief. Vera, what's all this row about? Well, ask her. The little cow accusing my mother of thieving from that Sutton Satan's shop she works in. Do you know how sweet hey, you are? Hey, give her a rest, eh, Mrs. Duckworth? Get hey, up. enough! Well, ask her then. She can't deny it. I've done nothing to be ashamed of, Mrs. Duckworth. No, but you think my mother has, don't you? I'm sick of this, Jack. Sort your wife out. Who oh, told like you talking? You want to try it? No, a pound, you. And a right little madam and all. Look, if anybody's been thieving from that shop, it's you. Yes, sneaking home with bits and pieces down your door. All right, that's enough. You can give that nasty tongue of yours a rest. Are you going to let him talk to me like that? Now, come on, cool it, Vera. Useless. Useless. I wish to God I had a man. <laughs> Will... Don't shout, 
shout at me, I'm here. I'm not shouting at you. Oh, God, I don't, I'm, I'm just upset, love. I just want you to tell me what they did to you in that shop. Oh, it were awful, Vera. They made me turn out my shopping bag and then Mr. Roberts found some what I hadn't paid for. Yeah, but you were going to do, weren't you? Did they give you a chance? Oh, yes. Well, I don't know. I didn't know it were in my bag. I don't remember putting it there, you see. You have shown me up for the last time you had your mouth. Oh, shut up, you. What do you expect when Alf Roberts is putting it about that the man's been thieving? It's you that's putting it about, you damn woman. Everybody in a flaming pub knows now. Do you know, I, I didn't know how to put myself. Ah, oh, stop moaning. So go on, man. What happened then? Well, they said I'd been stealing off them. Well, what about this tin of salmon? And they said there was something else and all. Tin of salmon? That'll be that flipping tin of salmon that she brought home, didn't I say at the time? There was something funny about it. Well, I might have known you wouldn't have sided with her. Oh, I'm sure I paid, Vera. I think I did any road. Of course you did, love. Look, she's knocking on a bit, isn't she? She just forgets things, that's all it is. Give over! She's not so puddled as she makes out. She's got all the flaming chairs at home when she wants. Hey, and never mind salmon and stuff from house. What about that scent she brought you? Well, what about it? Well, it's flaming dear stuff, that scent. Didn't I say at the time there was something funny about it? I bet she'd been nicking stuff from every flaming shop in town. What do you call that, then? It's a receipt. It's for that perfume I bought you. See, you flaming swine! Or are you saying she's nicked the receipt and all? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Coming in there saying I showed you up in that pub. Yeah, well, you did. No, love. You showed yourself up for not sticking up for your wife and not sticking up for me, ma'am. And now where are you going? I'm going to work and I've still got a job to go to. Oh, yes, if you were half a man, you'd get down to that corner shop and give out from us a good hiding. Ah, she's got a wicked tongue on her as Vera Duckworth. I'm just so glad Kevin was there to stick up for me. Well done, Kevin. Yeah, well, I had to, didn't I? But I've got to say this, Mr. Roberts. I didn't think I'd have to. Had you explained to Mrs. Duckworth properly, she seemed to be blaming Sally for what happened in here. How come? Well, it was no I said that. Like, oh, well, I did tell her that Sally had seen her mother. Yeah, well, you shouldn't go putting the blame on Sally, should you? Now, look it's here, all right, Kevin. love. I did come nothing on. of the sort, lad. Believe me, I take responsibility for what happens in this shop. Yeah, well, I'd best get back to work anyway. But if that Mrs. Duckworth comes anywhere near you, I want to know about it. Yeah, right. Shut up, yeah. Yeah. Oh, not again. Hey, there's been a shouting match at the local ale house. Is there anything you don't hear about, Mr. Sultan? Not much, because I keep my ear to the ground. Well, if I ever catch you with your ear to the ground, I shall stamp on it. I merely called in here to say to your Lord and Master, oh, how, oh. how I did warn him there might be ramifications. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it came to a court case. Look, Percy, I don't wish to discuss it. Well, I'm not surprised. People never do like discussing painful subjects. Yeah. Fill out. Give my love to your Nelly. Right. Right. We just keep going over and over it, Patrice. We're going round in circles. And what we're arguing about, it doesn't mean anything to me, honest. That's what I keep trying to tell you. This party just wasn't important. Nothing that happens matters, not to us. It matters to me. But it's spoiling everything. This harping on it, picking at it over and over. But I have to keep asking, because you told me lies before. First you tell me a story which it's is because not I, I didn't want to upset you. And then you tell me a different story, I question you, and you change it again. A little, then a little it's more. It's because you keep cross-examining me, that's why. So many lies, Jenny, one after another. All to cover up something you say meant nothing to you. I can't believe it. Well, what can I say? I wouldn't have to lie to you if you trusted me, but you don't. How can I? How can I trust you ever again? I'm going to pack my things. You're going home? Yes. And I won't be coming back. Right. Stand by your bed. The cook's back. Are you still here, you two? Yes, I'm leaving. Will you prepare my bill, please? Leaving? What do you mean, leaving? You booked that room for a full week. Yes, but I've changed my plan. All of them. It's a bit much. Leave it, Alec. Huh? Don't make a fuss. Just take the what he owes you and try and be nice about it. I know how you 
fail of? <laughs> no, you don't. Nobody does. I'll just say this. There's not one of them worth it. <laughs> He's bad. I love him. Now I've ruined everything. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, make curtains. Might be a bit of guilt in it, who knows? But mind you, if I have any trouble with the so-called workforce, I might sell up and go to sunny Spain. <laughs> yeah, we do that, my son. See you. Let's see you do it once more. Yeah, okay. Now, now don't forget, you're putting your material through your feeder to start your hem, then make sure you stick to your gauge. There's nothing to it once you get used to it. Yeah, they say that about a lot of things. Blaming Alf Roberts. You know why I picked on my mum, don't you? They thinks we're fair game or stuff. Uh, with. We had a bit less talking. We'd be turning out a better standard of work. What for speak? Can't I? I can speak, can't I, Ivy? What are you asking me for? I'm the same as you round here, nobody. Hey, Ida's here. I bet she's come for a card. Oh, Ida. You'll be wanting your money. How many have you got it? Gave it to you, Mr. Gordon. Hey? Oh, yes, so you did. Um, that thing, huh? And uh, sign that, will you? We'll send you P45 on. Emily's not sorted it out yet. Been a bit busy around here. Well, don't you think you'll hurt last to me because you haven't? Oh, is that so? I'm taking it to tribunal. And I'm claiming unfair dismissal. And I'll tell you something else and all. I reckon I'll get it. Well, good luck to you. Jenny. I knew you wouldn't leave me. Jenny, please, I'm not here to kiss and make up. It's over, Jenny. It's finished. So you came to tell me you already did do. No, I am here because of the engagement ring I gave you. It was my mother's and her mother's before that. It means a lot to my family. I know it means nothing to you. If it did, you would have never taken it off when you went to that party. Then... You want your ring back? Yeah. You can have it. Thank you. Is that it? Thank you. Well, what more is there to say? Except that I never wanted it to end like that. Goodbye. Right, let's see you do it. Good, you seem to have got the hang of it. I told you there wasn't a lot to it. Uh, what I'd like to know is what's a reasonable speed? I mean, what do you reckon is a fair average rate for one of these? Well, you'd be a bit slow to start with, but once you get used to it, about five minutes for an unlined width. Five minutes? Hang about. So what Bow is paying us, blimey. Isn't that good, Ivan? You must be joking. Good, it's rotten. It means we'll be working a damn sight harder for less money in his pay packets. It won't, will we? I see Mr. Baldwin drives a hard bargain. Yeah, well, it takes two to make a bargain. I'm seeing Baldwin about this. Right. Vera, isn't it? Let's see what you can do. Excuse me, Emily. Where's Mr. Baldwin? Oh, he's thinking about going into Manchester this afternoon. He, he won't be back in the office till the morning. Is something wrong? I'll say there's something wrong. We're going to lose a packet on them curtains, Emily. And I'm telling you, the girls won't stand for it. Well, I do sympathise, I do. Believe me, but... If I were you, I'd tread very carefully with Mr. Baldwin. Come off it, it's him that's going to be treading all over us. He was on the telephone to a friend of his this afternoon. I heard him say something about selling up. Now, I don't know whether he meant it or not, and no doubt he wanted me to hear. But I wouldn't put it past him. By rights, you know, you'll have to have a red lamp at either end of this skip tonight, cos cause a nasty accident. Well, don't tell me, tell Kevin. Ah, yeah, well, you'll find out, you know, being household risen to all beers and skittles, you're liable for all sorts. Eh, uh, well, it's not the householder, is he? He's not even got a mortgage yet. Good God, for when you don't mean he's got you pulling the house to pieces and he doesn't own the place, he must be starving. Oh, whoa, whoa, he has got permission off Mrs. Ogden. 
It's not what the paper it's written on. Oh, well, that's if he has got it in writing. What happens if Mrs. Ogden drops dead tomorrow? Or we'll gets savaged by a bull out in the wild there, uh, eh? Or falls under a track to these things happen, you know? Uh, oh, I know. Who's the owner then? They'll have young Kevin over a barrel. Oh, don't sell me. Sell him, will you? Aye, I will do. Help all, please. Okay. Isn't that that French lad? Oh, I... I thought he was stopping all week. You last night when you said you'd give us a lift. Oh, now he tells me. If I knew that, I would have stayed in bed. Uh, well, we could have both stayed in bed. If Kevin didn't get his act together and open this door. Come on, Webby, it's freezing out here. Are you fit, kid? I don't know where I am these days, Vera. Just between me and you, I looked at paper last night to see if there were any more jobs going. Hey, you're not thinking of leaving, are you? Well, I'm not happy with this setup. I can tell you that straight. And I'm going to tell Baldwin and all. Hey, well, you want to be careful, kid, or else you'll be going the same way as I do. Mood easy, and if it's on the sack you, look at you. And the mood I'm in, I'll have it to sack myself rather than give me a chance, Vera. Hiya, Hiya. 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 I've been waiting long, have you? Oh, not really, no. Yeah. Got me apprentice with me today. I yeah. am not your apprentice. Yeah, well, just so long as you're paying him and not me. Hmm. I'm not paying him. Work experience, isn't it, girl? Hey, it's experience of watching you work. That's all I've come for. <laughs> hey, listen. You work it out for yourself. How many have you done so far this morning? I'm on my fourth. Vera? Three. Well, that means that race we're getting paid you to have worked for next to nothing. Oh, this is no good. I'm going to see him and have it out here. Is something the matter, Mrs. Tilsley? Yeah, there's something very much the matter. There's something you can announce about. Well, you two getting on all right? Terrific. You're not breaking any records, though, are you? You ought to be picking up speed by now. Thank you. I'm not a flipping train, you know. Mm -hmm. I bet that's what's bugging Ivy. Oh. Won't just be the money. It'll be having old sourpuss in oh, charge of us. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. No, you won't. You stay where you are. We haven't finished yet. And anyway, what Ivy has to say won't take long, will it? Well, I don't know how long it'll take. Well, can't Mrs. Parker cope? Does it have to be me? Well, yes, it does have to be you. <sighs> Go on, then. Well, I just want to say that I think the way you cut our wages, Mr. Bowen, is, quite frankly, is diabolical. I haven't cut your wages. Oh, yes, you have. You cut them by 20%. You told us that yourself. No, that's your basic rate. The wages are whatever you want to earn. Come on, Mr. Baldwin. The wages you're paying us for peace rate, we'd have to be sat out there till midnight before it's amounted to anything. And please don't tell me we'll get faster as we go on, because there's a limit to how fast anybody can go without going balmy process. All right. I won't tell you then. Look, we're only asking to be fair, Mr. Baldwin. I mean, none of us were exactly getting rich on what we were earning before, but at least we could set ourselves while it's near enough going rate. Now, well, quite frankly, we think we're being taken advantage of. We? But what's all this we? You're representing the others, or what? Well, no, but I know they feel similar to what I do. Ah, this is just uh, you, then? Yes. Anything else? Well, don't you think you're being a bit unfair, Mr. Ball? No. Well, I blooming well do. And I don't know what sort of a conscience it is you've got that lets you do what you've done and still lets you sleep of a night. Oh, dear. What's the matter? Something wrong? Well... Obviously, everybody's rather unhappy about things, aren't they? Nah, look at me. I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. Right. I'm done now, Mrs Gilroy. OK, Amy. Oh, I'm going to be needing some more polish. Come down to the last tin. I'll pick you some up. Then. Right. Ta-ra, then. Hello. Uh, Ta-ra, Amy. Bye. I say. What? You might save her, Bob, or two, if you asked her to pick up her own polish. From what I hear, she's got a very clever trick of forgetting to pay for her purchases. <laughs> ah, Jack, we've just been talking about your mother-in-law. Alex, <coughs> right, I believe uh, she's had a spot of bother with Alf Roberts. He's been making some rather unpleasant accusations against her, hasn't he? 
I think it was a cot to fever, aren't they? Fever. Are they going to prosecute or call in the police or what? No, I don't think he's going to do no. See, apparently, he stopped her inside the shop instead of letting her get out with her stuff. All the same with these big-time villains, you know. They get off with the technicality. But as I said to Alf, all he's got to do is bung me a couple of dozen tins or something or other. I'll plant them underneath her bed. She can go down for ten years' hard labour or something. Well, it make life a damn sight easier for me, won't it? Mm. Doesn't seem very bothered, does it? Well, there's some consolation for you there, isn't there, love? What do you mean? Well, Jack and Amy may not be the two most reliable employees we've ever had, Tiger, but one thing they're never going to do, they're never going to gang up on us. Have you moved in next door yet? No, not yet. Looks like a bomb city, and it's only Martin Plant. <laughs> he never did any damage when he worked at the cafe. Yeah, that's because he was frying sausages and not setting about the place with a crowbar. <laughs> Hello, love. How's the two grandchildren of mine? They're all right. Here, give her these for after the tea. Hey, you'll be having them with no teeth, you know that, don't hey, you? It's not as if it's every two minutes. That's a uh, 220, girl, please. Actually, you know, our mortgage doesn't even come through yet. They are taking the time about it. Well, there won't be any problems, though, will they? First time buyers, no kids, both working. That's what they regard as a highly desirable state of affairs, isn't it? They do. Yeah, happened to right. I've forgotten. <laughs> so, uh, what uh, do you think they'd say, Mr. Roberts, if I phone him up and I say, what are you doing about me and Kev's mortgage? They'll say, very sorry, madam, it's resting with head office. We'll be in touch as soon as possible. Oh, well, we'll have to go on waiting then, won't we? What would you say if I turn up at your new doorstep at half seven and whisk you out somewhere for a bit of supper? Given the sort of day I've had done, I'd say that that was just what I needed. Great. Oh. I'll see you then, then. Are you not stopping with us? They don't bite, you know. No, we'll have nothing to talk about tonight if we talk about it now. Oh, Be good. Yeah. See you, Peter. Yeah, see you, Kate. Yeah, all right, though. Right, yeah. Can't keep away from you these days. Yeah, I wish I had a fella chasing me like that. Nobody's chasing anybody. You just happen to be in it, that's all. Yeah. Oh, what the one. Ah! <laughs> He's in here again on his own. Prefers it to his own home, does he? I suppose he might. There's a lot, do. Making out his reading. And all the time, his eyes are everywhere. Oh, aye. He's a proper lounge lizard, is our Ken. Oh. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> yeah, fine. OK, see ya. Right, I'm off now, Mr Baldwin. Hang on a minute. I've just said Graham Farrell on the phone. Graham... Oh, you don't know him. It doesn't matter, but uh, he's a buyer. I've known him for ages. I never thought he'd come across with anything. Suddenly, out the blue, look, firm order. Curtains, ready-made up for the end of the week. Oh, wonderful. Yes, wonderful if we can do it. And we've got to. Because there could be more to come. If we don't, well, we've blown it. I see. Yeah, so what do you think? I mean, if I told the troops, you think they'd rally round, full cooperation, work until they drop, cut out the tea breaks and volunteer for overtime? Not really, no. No, nor me either. From what I've seen of them over the past few days, I think you're more likely to end up with a go slow on your hands. <laughs> and they couldn't go much slower unless they went backwards, could they? Well, anyway, listen, uh, this order's strictly between you and me. I don't want them finding out about this yet. I shan't say anything, no. Good. We'll work out the paperwork later. In the meantime, I've got a little bit of uh, subtle man management to do. Or in this case, uh, woman management. Which means I've got to be even more subtle. Hi, Carol. I've been in the house first, lad. See how they was getting on. What do you mean, they? Well, Martin's got Curly helping him. Got the day off college. I think he was stuck for something to do. Oh, good old Curly. Hey, as long as it didn't affect his twelve, it'll be better. Hey, you've made some progress in stripping the old way, sanding down banisters. Hey. What? Where did this come from? Oh, don't say Postman Pat's been creeping in while you weren't looking. <laughs> you put it there, didn't you? Put it in with just uh, now. Must have come in the second post. It was at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, Kevin, it's from the building society. It's from the building society. Well, leave it out. Someone else is using the envelopes. Oh, it is, Kev. Dear Mr and Mrs Webster, with regard to your application for a mortgage on the property known as Number 13 Coronation Street, we regret. Can't I? What? 
We regret we are not in a position to make any such offer and must therefore reject your application. Thank you for your interest. Come here. But why, Kev? Why would they turn us down? So far as I know, they only refuse if they think the property is not worth what you're paying for it. Yeah, but we're getting it cheap. Mrs. Ogden's had asked us less than she'd ask anybody else. I know. Well, how can it not be worth it? Then? I don't know. I don't even know if that's what they're thinking. Well, let's have a look at that again. Don't matter how many times I read it, it's not going to change what it says. I won't mind, no, it don't even invite us in to discuss it or anything. It just says, no, plain, simple, get lost. Well, they might have made a mistake, might they? They don't make mistakes, them people. We're the ones who's made the mistake, aren't we? Started work on the house, taking cupboards out, taking plaster off, taking most of one oh, ceiling down. Oh, Kevin. Oh, because you couldn't wait. We had to get in there, didn't well, we? Well, it were you as well. Don't go blaming me, Kev. You were just as keen as I was to get started. Yeah. You were, Kevin. I know, I know. After there's one another, won't we? Well, no, we weren't, because we certainly wouldn't have any problems getting a mortgage. Everyone we've spoken to has said the same. Well, the state that house is in. It's going to cost us a fortune if we have to have it put right. I mean, we could have done it bit by bit in our own time, but if they say they want it put right straight away, well, we're going to have to get someone in to do it. It's going to cost us a fortune. That we don't have. No. So we're going to have to borrow it, aren't we? That'd be great, wouldn't it? Get an loan to put right the house. We can't even get a mortgage on. They'd probably turn us down for that as well. Sit down, Ivy, love. You know, I've been thinking. Me? About what you said earlier. Oh, yes, well, I'm sorry if you didn't like it, Mr. Bowman, but I don't believe in keeping... No, I agree with you. With the... With... You are? I agree with you. I can see how it must seem to you. It must seem as if I'm trying to screw every last penny out of you. Yeah, well, of course it does a bit, yeah? I'm not, honest. I mean, how would you like me to put you back on the old rate if I said this place would be closed within six months? Oh, surely. Cross Mr. my heart, hope to die. What were we doing all that before? No, we weren't. It may have looked as if we were, but underneath the rot had already set in. Believe me. Well, anyway, I didn't ask you near to give you a lot of flannel. What I want to hear is, what do you want, Ivy, eh? I mean, what is it to get us back on the same side again, eh? I mean, what is it? Tell me. Well, you could put us back wages same as we were before. Closed within six months. Oh, no, no. No, you're right. None of us want that, do we? What if... What if I was to put the rate up, eh? Say, uh, 5%? Uh, no, no, we'd still be well short, Mr. Bobby, no. Yeah, you're right. We've got to do something else, haven't we, eh? But, uh, well, I don't know. What? Come on, you tell me. Well, I don't know, do I? Here. Yeah. What about a bit of overtime, eh? Make your money up that way. Earn as much as you like, eh? Now, what do you say to that? But Mr. Bobby, when did we last get overtime? Yeah, you're right, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll guarantee it. A time and a half as much as you want. Now, uh, I can't be fairer than that, can I? Or can I? I mean, does it sound as if I'm trying to screw you? No, no. But mind you, there is another side to this. I mean, if I keep my side of the bargain, then I need a commitment from you and that lot out there that they get stuck in and deliver the goods. Well, I'd have to see what girls think, wouldn't I? Oh, yeah. yeah of course you would, love. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Ivy? Anything? Well, it's an improvement on what we're on now, isn't it? Well, it's further than I thought I'd go. A hell of a lot further. <laughs> I don't know, you're coming here, calling me all the names under the sun, and what do you go out with, eh? Five percent rise and guaranteed overtime, I tell you what. Those girls out there should be very grateful to you. And if they're not, I'll tell them. So, Ivy, don't go out there and ask for their support. You go out there and demand it. Well, it's beyond me, it is. And they didn't say anything over the phone, either. But they did say that if we call in, they'll explain it all to us there and then. So I said, right, well, we're coming in now, then. Are you sure you don't mind? No, no, it needs sorting out, does that look? Look, I'm sure it's a mistake. I mean, a young couple in your position, you think we're throwing mortgage at you. <sighs> OK. 
Did you ask Brian? Yeah, he says he don't know what to play in that either. And we ought to get in there and sort him out. Right, come on, let's go and do it. I'm the best of British. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, look, but the way I see it, he'll yeah, still have cut us wages, I won't he? Yes, but not by as much. And he's promised us bags of overtime. Overtime? Don't you think we're in here enough already? Yeah. Yeah, we might as well bring us beds. Yeah. All right, all right. One of you two go in and see if you can talk to him, see if you're any better. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Well, come on. You're right for a bit of overtime tonight, Queen? Well, I could manage it if it's important. It's vital. Do you want to spare this? Well, they're all coming in as well? Yeah, they volunteered. Well, that's not true, actually. Uh, they're just about to. Right then, ladies. Ladies, I suppose Ivy's told you how she twisted my arm. Yeah, yeah she hasn't twisted it far enough. Well, I told them what you'd said, Mr. Bob. Well, now, come on, Ivy. What you said. Don't give me all the credit. So, uh, everyone's happy then? Well, well, about this overtime? Yeah. Well, well, we've never seen much of it before. When does that begin? Well, that's not the point. If you were given the opportunity, would you do it or wouldn't you? I suppose so. I don't want to suppose so. I want a yes or a no. Yeah. yeah. Shirley? Yes. Ivy? Yes. Ladies? Oh, yeah. 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 Right, well, that's it then. Start tonight. So, uh, have an hour for tea. Back here at half past six. Two hours overtime. Uh, three for those that want it. Oh, and ladies, I think uh, we all owe Ivy a vote of thanks for clearing the air and getting us all pulling in the same direction again. Yeah, I think it's Thanks, Ivy. Thanks, Ivy. Gee, I don't know what's going on, me. I feel like one of them contraptions at a fairground, you know, that turns you upside down. <laughs> Look, Vera, Vera, I know it's not exactly perfect, but at least we can earn a bit more money, can't we? I mean, I'm not exactly over the moon, love, about giving my evenings off. And... Oh, no. What's up? Talking about giving me evenings up, I promised to don't call around, haven't I? The house will be empty, I mean, it'll just find the door locked. Oh, bloody heck, Vera, how am I going to let him know? I'm afraid there hasn't been a mistake. The letter you received was one I signed, and... As it says, we're unable to offer you a mortgage. Why? Is it that we're just not earning enough? Oh, no. Your joint income is more than adequate. Can you tell us? Of course. I didn't want to say anything on the phone, because it's rather a delicate matter. On page three of your application form, there's a question. Have you ever been adjudged bankrupt or had a high court or county court judgment made against you? Yeah. And you've answered no? Yeah. Well, we haven't. Our head office made certain inquiries. All perfectly routine, we do it with everybody. And they discovered that in June 1985, you, Mrs. Webster, had a county court judgment made against you, relating to an unpaid debt. Me? under your maiden name, Miss Sally Seddon. So? I'd forgotten all about that. £216.48. Since this wasn't disclosed on the form, we had no option but to refuse your application. I'm sorry. Right. Makeup. What the? Have I got right out? Ah, just care take it. Come in, make yourself a tall man. Do it. May as well. Hey, where's Ivy? Grafting, same as our Vera. God bless Mike Baldwin, that's what I say. Now, he might be a devious little runt, but he knows how to treat women. Right, I was chulled to help myself do a drink. And I've just run out a couple of these. I think Ivy must have been saving for next Christmas. Well, cheers, yes. Good on you. Hey, with a bit of luck, he might keep them there all night. Ivy's sitting out about this at dinner time. What's come over them? I don't know. She just come round our house, a bit of a panic, asked me to station myself here to take care of you. And you're doing a very good job. Cheers. Cheers, kid. By the way, I can give her a message if you like. Uh, who? By uh, you play hard to get. Amy. Amy Burton. She of the seductive smile and the support stocking. <laughs> Jack's mother-in-law. Yeah. She was convinced you were eyeing her up in here this dinner. Oh. And here you are again. Yeah, well, I'm here again because my living room is full of Deirdre's council colleagues. I mean, if Amy really wants to know. And there was I mm. thinking you were really in here to see me. 
I know she is supposed to talk to the customers, but I just wonder why it's got to be the same one all the time. I have no idea. As long as he's buying drinks, she'll be complaining for a bit. <laughs> the strokes I pulled today, you just wouldn't believe it. I convinced those women over there that he pulled the fast one by persuading me to let them do overtime. <laughs> why does it always have to be a matter of pulling strokes on people, mind? Well, it doesn't. Not all the time. Not where you're concerned. <laughs> Smooth, very smooth. But it's true. I wouldn't know. I know the difference between where it sounds like when it's true and where it sounds like when you pull in a stroke. <laughs> oh, come on, don't give me. Ah, Mr. Gilroy, has uh, Kevin Webster been in? Uh, no. It's typical, isn't it, eh? Uh, Two uh, pints of bitter, then, please. Uh, well, you're doing a great job, lads. Tell you what, see it, for all this tonight, all the drinks are on me. Unless I'm not in. Right. Exactly. No gratitude, I've some folk. It'll be £1.52, gentlemen. Let's have a look then. Five, six, seven. Uh, shame that. <laughs> Nine, ten, Jack. Oh, well, I'm not playing with you no more. It's a flipping ten, I doubt. It ain't saying no more. Oh, I see you managed to catch him then. I tried running off, Harvey, but I collared him for you. Eh, uh, what's all this then? Just a quiet game of snap, my love. Help us pass the time. Oh, yeah, he's very good at snapping, Jack. Yeah, uh, give me a right pest in the ass. Do you mean you've been here gambling while well, I've been over there working fingers to burn till all hours? Now, be fair, Vaney. I've always had bony fingers. Right, come on, you. You can tell your lies in privacy at all, home. Come on. Good to see you, Tom. Uh, nice to see you and all, Jack. Yeah. I won't care if I've been out enjoying myself, but no, I've been working to bring money home. Oh, you were took away. Get sure. out! <laughs> As if losing weren't bad enough. He's going to get a rollicking on top of it. Hey, Don, <laughs> he ain't lost all that much, has he? Uh, not as much as he would have done if his missus hadn't turned up to rescue him. Yeah. Anyway, what's all this overtime like in head of? Oh, I'll tell you later. I want to get washed and changed. Yeah, all right. Uh, no, uh, do you feel like dipping out for a bit of supper, though, still? I won't mind, yeah. Yeah, good, because I know I do, and I'll tell you what, I can afford it now. But at least let me tell you. I don't want to know. What difference will it make now, anyway? Because it was when I was 18. It was a couple of my mates. They were going abroad on holiday. They asked me if I wanted to go with them, and I'd never been abroad before. So I said, yeah. Only I didn't have any money. <laughs> so I took out this loan. You could pay back this loan in, like, these instalments. Well, it all would have been fine. It would have worked out OK. Only when I got back from the holiday, I got the sack from this shop where I was working, and I couldn't pay him back. I mean, they wrote me letters and stuff, and... Well, that was all. Oh, so you thought he'd just gone away, did you? Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. I really am. As though things wasn't bad enough, we've now got your old debts to pay as well. Suppose, what? Kev. Suppose we paid off that debt. And we told them we paid it off. Well, they might give us a mortgage then, might they? Oh, you don't have to be stupid as well. Well, if we paid it off. Yeah, we would have still lied to them. We put no on that form instead of yes. They don't trust us anymore. That's what they're saying. It's all my fault, isn't it? Yeah. So we've lost it then, that house. I mean, we really have, haven't we? We've lost it. Yeah. Well, it's worse than that. Can you not get it into your head? We've been in there, we've ripped half the inside out. So yes, we can't have it. Because of your lies, we can't have it. But what's more, after what we've done in there, we made sure nobody else can have it either. What are you brooding about? I'm suffering from a severe attack of reluctant admiration, if you must know. Why be reluctant to admire me? Join the fan club. Not you. A uh, gal out of Baldwin across the road at Stalag 17. I thought we had decided he was a closed book. Ah, but you've got to admire him, haven't you? Smooth, lecherous little cockney he might be. But there's not many other boss class left like him, dedicated to grinding the faces of the working classes and laughing all the way to the bank. Ah, that's what I call job satisfaction, that. You do a pretty good imitation of a slave driver yourself. Do you know what Jack and Glow call you behind your back? What? Napoleon. Napoleon. I don't know, it's quite flattering, that. But I'm, I'm wasted here. This place isn't big enough for a talent like mine. I've no room to grow, to expand. No, to achieve my full potential as a bloodsucker, I need something big, you know, like a car factory. Ah. I'd strut around the shop floor, whip in one hand, glass of champagne in the other, no danger. 
I'll tell you what it is about Mike Baldwin, shall I? Mm. It's not just power and greed with him. He's a very bitter, unhappy little cockney since his marriage went bust. Connie, a word. Another flaming board meeting. What's the fact to talk about in there, them two? How much are going to squeeze out of us today, eh, Ivor? I've done my best, Vera. But I didn't say you haven't been out. Are you dead certain they're going to finish the day? Yeah, no problem. They'll be finished this afternoon. They're working really well now. They've really got in the swing of making curtains. Well, most of them. Good psychology not telling them it was a rush job. One of them was sure to drag her heels out of sheer bloody mindedness, but... What they didn't know, they couldn't sabotage. Hey, look at him, grinning like a full moon. He thinks he's so smart, doesn't he? Trouble is, he is. I'm going to put Hilda's house back to what it was before we started pulling it to pieces. Then I'm going to tell her we can't afford to buy it. That's what I'm going to do. You know. I am. There's other places to get a mortgage, Kev, besides one rotten building society. There's loads of building societies. Every other building down Church Street is a building society. They're all dying to help you buy a house. That's what they're all about. That's what those offices, that's what they're there for. All right. Suppose we do get a mortgage. That's another debt. Because that's all a mortgage is. A fancy name for a debt. Then there's a 200 and odd pound which suddenly discovered we still owe to your Costa Brava rave up. It was not a rave up. It was a holiday and it was the Costa del Sol and it was three years since. It was a never, never loan. I'll never have to bear that, that back, Kevin. They don't know where I am now or who I oh, am now. Oh, the building society soon found out who you was. They're not going to blab, are they? They've got better things to so, do. So, we're going to pay that money back. I'm not having that hanging over our heads. No way. And before we put in for another house, we're going to save a decent deposit so we don't have much of a mortgage. We are going to be old and grey by yes. then. Well, at least we won't be grey, we worry. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. Thank you. How's your Jack keeping these days? Well, is he? He's only come up on pools. Hey, that's lucky for both of you. Mm, yeah. Was it uh, a big win? Nearly £2,000. Well, that's better than slapping the chocks with wet lettuce, isn't it? <laughs> what are you going to buy with your share? Get yourself a yacht? First thing we're going to buy is a new bed. Oh. When we've got sags that much in middle, it's like sleeping in a ditch. Us? <laughs> <laughs> Ta-ra. Morning. Morning. Well, what do you want me to do first, then? Well, pin a smile on your face for a start before you turn these balm cakes stale. Hey, what was all that ranting and raving this morning upstairs? What ranting and raving? You and Kevin. A tin of soup fell off that shelf, nearly crowned me. Look, I know it's none of my business, but if there's going to be blood dripping through the ceiling, I think I ought to be warned. Well, we've been refused the mortgage. So why? Hey, building societies aren't going broke like all these yuppies, are they? No, they found out I still owe some money I once borrowed on a holiday. Oh, they did, did they? Yes, they did. So I'm a bad risk, me, aren't I, to lend money to, like a mortgage. Yeah, well, that's what comes of getting in debt in the first place, isn't it? Neither a borrower nor a lender be. That's always been good advice, and yeah, it still is. Everybody's in debt these days, though, Mr Roberts. I read somewhere that every single person in this country owes hundreds and hundreds of pounds. That's on, on credit cards and HP and that. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't owe anybody a red cent. I've never used a credit card, and I never will. If I can't pay for something, I shan't have it. That would mean me never get in my house. Then. Well, save up for it. Save. Well, you must be all right. I mean, you've got two wages coming in. Well, it's not that we couldn't save, because we could save. But that's like jam tomorrow, isn't it? Oh. I want my jam today, Mr. Roberts. I want Mrs. Ogden's house, and I think I'm entitled to it. Talking about all these yuppies, look how they live with their expensive cars and the townhouses. That's mostly brought on credit, isn't it? And it's supposed to be a smart to be a yuppie. So what is wrong with little me wanting a little terraced house? You're not going to start crying, are you? Very probably. Where's Vera? What again? It's not her fault, it's this condition she has. What condition? Well, it's called the whitest, isn't it, Ivan? How many bags is that you've had this morning? What do you mean? Don't tell me you keep going to the toilet for any other reason, cos I don't believe you. Well, that's where you're wrong. It's the stress of this job that kicks my heel once ago. Well, in future, try keeping your legs crossed. Or better still, leave your fags at home. Where did he find her, eh? Do you know, I think she's his flaming sister. Oh. Or his mother. Anyway, they're both out same boat. <laughs> Emily, is he giving her lessons, eh, in putting boots in, or is she just natural? Because I'll tell you what, we've come to the end of our tether in here, haven't we? Yeah, we have. I don't know. I, I shouldn't be telling you this, but I think you'll find you won't be under quite so much pressure after today. Why after today? 
Baldwin's going in hospital for a life and death operation. Go on, say it's true. Becca's all delirious. Actually, the work you're doing, it's a rush order. Today's the completion date. I haven't told you that. It's more than my job's worth if Mr. Baldwin ever finds out I did. Oh, well. Well, that's it. Is that me for one? I bet he's getting paid way above the odds for this order. You can bet your life on it. Rush job, special price. Yeah, but he still pays us peanuts. Yeah, well, that's why I'm withdrawing my cooperation. In fact, I think I might be taken short again. It's too late, though, isn't it, Vera? Well, why is it too late? Because the job's all but done and dusted, you silly devil. Well, we could always set fire to it. I've got a box of matches in my handbag. Oh, don't talk so silly, Vera. He's conned us again, and you know he has. Why is it everything you say? It's just like somebody throwing a bucket of cold water all over me. Because you don't like hearing it truth, that's why, Vera. Ooh. Mr. Roberts. Hmm? Is a sub the same as borrowing, you know, getting into debt? A sub? How do you mean? Well, you see, I was thinking that if you could give me a sub of just four weeks, four weeks, that would be enough. I could pay off what I still owed on that holiday. That wouldn't be like borrowing from me, would it? Not really. Because that would be just like getting paid in advance, which is, if you think about it, that's only fair. You've not joined a union, have you? No. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Well, what do you say? Could you give me a sub? Sorry. But why not? Because it would be borrowing. Be borrowing on your future earnings. Which is what I'd be doing anyway, isn't it? I'd be getting money from a building society on the strength of my future earning power. Everybody says that's very commendable, don't they? Very prudent. You're trying to blind me with words. I'm not. I'm just telling you the facts. Yeah, and so am I. And the fact is, this debt you got yourself into to pay for this airy-fairy foreign holiday. It's the road to ruin, love, especially somebody your age. And if I help you pay it off, just like that, without any cost to you or any real pain, well, it could be that you'll, you'll miss some valuable lesson. You'll go through life struggling from debt to debt. You'll never prosper. You'll never be successful. You'll never have your own home, your own shop like me. Does this mean that you're not going to give me a sub of just a month's wages? That's just four weeks. That's just 28 days. Yes, it does. And don't start looking like a lost kitten. I'm sorry, Mr. Robert. You mean you want it putting back the way it was? Yeah, I do. Can't be done. Well, not exactly, but more or less. Have you seen that skip out there? It's not pieces of jigsaw puzzle, you know. There's bricks and mortar and plaster. In other words, rubble. I wish we can't put back together again. Well, I can't anyway. Well, we've got to try. Why? Because... Because there's been a snag with a mortgage. What, you mean you can't get one? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. We've only got to knock down someone else's house. Well, he told us to do it, didn't he? We're still the demolishers after the fact. Stop exaggerating. It's not been knocked down. It's just been... Uh, substantially rearranged. Whatever you say, Kev. It's a big job. Big job? It's gargantuan. Set your eyes on him. Who? Don't give me that. Mike Baldwin. <laughs> My eyes on on him. You don't have to be. I'll be seeing enough of him tonight when he takes me out. You won't be told, will you, Claude? What? That is diabolical, that is. Oh, you can say that again. And again. But he conjured you to work in your socks off so that he won't have to pay your fair rate for the job. I don't believe it. No, no we don't know that for certain. I mean, he could still put rate up a bit further. Yeah. But why did he keep quiet about that rush job, then? Because he's no intention of putting the rate up. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to let him get away with it? Well, he'll only deny there's bum in it for him, so what's the point? I don't even think he'll bother to deny it. No, he'll just tell you to mind your own business. That's where he operates these days. Well, it's not on. It's just not on. I'm going to have a word with him. Don! Mr. Bowen. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Don Brennan. I'm a friend of Mrs. Tilsley's. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Do you think you've been quite fair to her? And to her mates? Changing what she's been making all these years, cutting their rates of pay, and all without any consultation. But what's it going to do with you? This is not the 19th century, you know. Things have changed a bit since then. At least everywhere else they have, apart from your firm, apparently. What are you, a communist or something? Oh, I'm not a communist. I told you, my friend. I'll tell you what you definitely are. You're out of order, mate. For poking your nose in what doesn't concern you and interrupting me when I'm trying to have a drink, so just get lost. Oh, you're something else, you are. You're out of the ark, mate. Nobody treats their workers the way you've been treating them women. I know that she's statues, Britain, and the three million unemployed, but there are bloody limits. Here, here. Oh, I thought you'd be on his side. Another bleeding heart. Well, let me tell you something, the pair of you. 
If it wasn't for blokes like me building up a business, there'd be 10 million unemployed. Oh, spare me the rhetoric. You're not running a business to help the unemployed. Like all employees, you're doing it for you. You don't need to run that jag, keep getting whiskey. And what have you ever done? Apart to pontificate either on that soapbox of yours or in that rag you run. You're like your big mouth mate here. I've got a long way to go, mate, before my mouth is as big as yours. Gentlemen, <laughs> I think this discussion has gone on for long enough. If you wish to continue it, I suggest that you do it outside. All three of you. It's all right. I was going anyway. I've got work to do. I'm going to count your blood money, mate. You are asking to be banned, Donald. They get up my nose, blokes like that. Really, Kenneth, I don't expect that sort of behaviour from you. I got a nose too, you know, Bert. Well done there, boss. I was about to step in myself. One more peep out of that communist friend of Ivy's and he will be banned. Embarlow skated on thin ice and all. It's whiskey drinkers that keep pubs like this going, not your half pint an hour merchants. Have you no social conscience? None. Sorry, love. I just had to say something to him. Well, I just hope you've not talked us all out of a job, that's no. all. Well, I don't care if he has. It were worth it to hear Baldwin give us some more truths. In public and all. Absolutely. Well, I hope you're both at the same man when you're shuffling around the job centre. I'm sorry, love. Well, what's done is done now, ain't it? <laughs> Being a relative of the proprietor, a close relative at that, I think I should get a discount. Well, actually, knowing how flush you are, I usually put a few extra pee on your head. Yeah, I believe it at all. It's either that or the government's lying about inflation. Stop running it around that I'm flush with you. I'm not. Nobody's flush who's got two kids to clothe and feed. Yeah, well, compared with me, you are. Oh, I been spending all the rent money on the sales, have you? Chance would be a fine thing. Gail, mm. wouldn't you prefer to live in your own house, you know, instead of living in a council house? Yeah, of course I would. Who wouldn't? Well, why do you then? Because I would have thought with Brian having his own business. That's just it. We sank all our money in the business. And are you prepared to wait till you can afford a place of your own then? You've got no other choice, have I? Why all the questions? Oh, nothing. I was just interested. You're not anchoring after one of those luxurious detached down Green Acres Lane, are you? Well, I might be. Just give me some time. Well, I just hope Brian can afford to pay Kevin the kind of way to keep you in that sort of luxury. Oh, yes, so do I. Hello, stepfather. Hello, cheeky. Any messages? No, it's been dead quiet. It's been like a grave. Has it? Oh. Was Kevin the Rovers? Ah, I've not been in the Rovers. Because oh, he didn't come home for his dinner, you see. He's hiding from me, I know he is. He always does this one without a row, especially about money. Well, it makes him so unhappy, you see. He's even suicidal. All right, I'll give you a sub on your wages. Oh, will you? Oh, thanks, Mr. Hey, Robert. hey, steady up. Look, it's only for one month and not a penny more. Oh, that's all right. That's all I want. Yeah, it's the first and last time and all. You're playing a very dangerous game, you know, getting up to your ears in debt. I, I know times have changed that most people like to live now and pay later. There's one or two of them do that in the street. But they all come unstuck, you know. They all end up broke and miserable. Yes, Mr. There's Mr. more Robert. pleasure in having a packet of fish and chips paid for than a ton of caviar on the Never Never. Oh, yes, Mr. Robert. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm hanging on your every word, Mr. Roberts. You know what I think? What? I think we're selling ourselves short. He's not going to fire anybody. He's invested time and money in us. We're his red experts now. He needs us. Don't you agree, Isaac? Yeah, I think you could be right, you know. Oh, I am right. I mean, it's obvious. He'd have been frothing at the mouth by now. It's nearly as tea break. Well, I certainly expected him to be raving at me right now. Hey, hey, oh. I think we're under observation. Yeah, well, don't look back at him. It might just inside. Yeah. You know, I think I'll put my tongue out at him. Don't be stupid, dear. Well, I'm not fond of him, you know. Nice and I won't be breaking my neck for him in future, either. Yeah, me neither. He's had his last rush order out of me. Ivy! Get in here. Did you hear that? Do you know I wouldn't talk to a dog like that? Yeah. Hey, tell him you'll get done on to him, either. Oh. Uh, there is a word called please in the English language, you know, Mr. Bowen. Eh? Well, I would prefer it if you said please come in next time you want to see me. And I prefer if your boyfriend didn't slag me off in the road. Well, he shouldn't have done that. Oh, you bet he should. Did you pull him up to it? 
I just told you, I said he should have done it. But he was speaking your mind? Yes, he was. And everybody else's. Well, I don't care what you think. I pay you to turn out ready-made curtains flat out with no cock-ups. That's what you did last week. And you can do it next week, the week after that, and the week after that. And you can think until you're dizzy. Well, I know that you're only interested in results, Mr. Bobby. I'm just reminding you, that's all. Well, let me remind you of something, Mr. Bobby. You won't be getting results, no way. Not with people feeling as resentful as we are out there. And certainly not with Collie Parker breathing down his backs and rubbing everybody up wrong way. I'll make sure I do get results. Well, you know what they say, Mr. Longwin, there's more ways to skin in a cat than doing it in broad daylight. Just wait till you want your next rush order, you'll see what I mean. You threatening me? No. Just stating facts. Talking of curtains, there's one uh, halfway stuck in my machine. I think it might be one of those that you want going out fast. Then you better go out and finish it, won't you? What did he say? Well, let's just say with a frank exchange of views. Has he fired you? No. I was right then. He does lead us. You know, I think I will cut my tongue out at him. <laughs> Could we have less chit chat and more work, please? Shut up, yo! I'm sick of hearing the sound of your bloody voice. What did you say? You heard. I'll make a tape of it if you like. Uh, right. I'm reporting you to Mr. Baldwin for bad language. Did you hear that for yourself, Mr. Baldwin? I told you to be careful, Vera. Well, I'm not as diplomatic as you, either. She really wants to make an example of us, that Vera Duckworth, Mr. Baldwin. She's more trouble than all the rest of them put together. And she's not that hot a machinist, either. I reckon with somebody else on her machine, we'd have had that order finished by dinner time. Oh, we have done, by the way. Finished it, I mean. Not bad, eh? Big order like that in just three days, and hardly any spoils. I don't think you thought it could be done, but I do. Thank you very much. That's what I'm here for. Till the end of the week. Pardon? I don't think it's quite worked out, you and this job here. Has it worked out? I'll pay you till the end of next week and there'll be a nice little bonus. But well, I've got that sewing room working like clockwork. I have. Me. Nobody else. Oh, that's it, isn't it? I've served my purpose now. I'm redundant. You've just used me. Don't talk yourself out of a bonus, darling. You can stick your bonus, Mr. Baldwin. Not that I don't need it, because I do. Like I need this job. Man's the only wage coming into our house. <laughs> That's no concern of yours, is it? You've got your expensive lifestyle to keep up. Well, I wish you a lot of bad luck, Mr. Baldwin. I really do. What's going on? Oh. Oh, she's gone. Ivy. Yes? I've uh, got a supervisor's job going. It's yours if you want it. Is that money? Mine? Well, it's our money now. Where from? Well, I got it from Mr. Roberts, but I can pay him back, Kev. It was his idea, actually. What? Alf offered it, yeah? Well, yeah, with a bit of prompting he did. Give it him back. Well, I can pay off what I owe then. Yeah, and you're left with another debt to Mr Roberts. Yeah, but I can pay Mr Roberts back out of my wages. I don't want another debt. What's the difference? I owe 200 pounds. It doesn't matter who I owe it to, it's still the same debt. Just paying it back to Mr Roberts, that makes it just a little bit easier. I don't want another debt. Oh, you're being illogical. All I'm saying is I don't want another debt. I want that house, Kevin. I want to get my foot on the ladder. The longer we put this off, the less chance we have ever on in our own home. And what if I got pregnant, for instance? You won't. Oh, famous last words. My mother always wanted her own home as well, and she never got it because my father always took her rent money for his booze in. You're not saying I'd do that, are you? No, but what you're doing, Kevin, it's just the same, but just a little bit different. Oh, please, Kevin, don't let this house slip through our fingers. We can't even get a mortgage. Well, you could. You don't owe anybody anything. What? You saying a mortgage in my name? Yeah. But I thought it was joint everything with you. Joint owners, joint bank account, joint breathing. Oh, I don't care who owns it, Kevin, as long as I can live in it. Oh, please, I'll work every hour I can to make sure that we can afford those payments. 
Well, we'll see how prices are going to come down soon, so I'll think about it. Oh, please, Kev. I'll look into it. Thanks. But you're giving him that money back. Well, what are we going to do then? We're going to pay it back out of our savings. Savings we're going to use to get our new house together. Oh, Kevin. Well, that's the way it's going to be. All right, I'll give Mr Roberts that money back then. Make sure you do. You'll never know how hard I had to work to get it, though. What? Nothing. I never had any trouble with bosses when I was working. A kiss and a bit of a fumble between looms and tack them were in your power forever. Especially if you were married. <laughs> yes, Mother. We all know you at Bella Spring Mill. You've told us often enough. So are you going to take Supervisor's job back? Get out, I'd just be doing exactly what he wants, wouldn't I? I mean, I had no time for that Connie way she treated us, but... In end, he treated her worse, didn't he? I mean, he used her and he chucked her away like an old show. I feel as if I did agree to be supervisor, well, I'd be collaborating, wouldn't I? Yeah, but at least we'd have a supervisor who was on our side. Yeah, we would. And you'd get a rise and all, Ivy. Oh, shut up, Mother. Hello. You're early. I've got a bit of a problem tonight. Oh, Yeah, there's this bloke who's got to meet a bit of business, so I'll have to take a rain check on that date we had, all right? Yeah, of course. OK. See you then. <coughs> What's up, man? Oh, well, uh, something's turned up. Says he's busy tonight. He'll hurt you, Glow. He will. As sure as God made little green up. Yeah, all right, Bess. I've got the message. Hello, Cabin. Oh, hello, Mrs. Atkinson. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks for letting us know. Well, I hope I'll soon be better. Hmm? Oh, now we'll manage somehow. Bye-bye. Well, that's that mystery, old Craig's got a bad cold. Uh, Still, it is bad cold weather, isn't it? It was bad cold weather at Christmas. Marvellous how they can fend off the germs in the tipping season. Hey, that's not fair, Mrs. Fairclough. No, it isn't. They've got four kids in his house, you know. He's always catching some off one of the little ones. They got measles from his little brother, didn't he? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, sure up the pair of you, you're breaking me off. Oh, she doesn't know the meaning of sympathy. Well, all right, if your heart goes out to the sick and needy so much, why don't you do Craig's round for him? Well, that's exactly what I was going to do. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, I was just trying to get hold of you. What's Mavis doing? Oh, one of the lads is off sick. That's why I was trying to get hold of you. You'll have to give us hand till she gets back. Oh, I'm sorry, love, I can't. Well, this place will be mowed out in a few minutes. People wanting their morning papers. I've got to go down to Frank's. He's getting his new video stock in this morning. You know what happens if you get there late? You get left with all the rubbish. Well, can't you leave him an order? Then he'll have it ready for you. That's no good. He doesn't know what he's getting himself till it turns up. You'll cope. Oh. Oh, I wish they wouldn't send me these things. What things? These charity things. I know it's for a good cause for old people, but they're all good causes, really, aren't they? Yeah, well, you can save that contribution for me. I felt 75 when I woke up this morning, and this thing's just added a few more years on. What is it? A lesser off Hilda's solicitor. He wants to know if we made any progress with a mortgage. God, is he angry? Well, I'm not angry exactly, no. He's just tired of waiting. You won't find out, will he, Kev? I'd hate the thought of him telling Mrs. O. What? About you and your bad debt, you mean? Oh, don't say it like that, love. You're not going to hold this against me for the rest of my life, are you? I was only a kid. Yeah, you was a daft kid. Well, kids are daft at that age. I was 18, my mates were going abroad, I wanted to go with them, I just borrowed the money. Yeah, OK. Oh, and you know what it was like for me in them days, living at home and... Then we moved house, and I didn't know anything about any daft court orders. I didn't know they were chasing me, did I? All right, all right, that's over and done with. We paid that, but we're still short of a mortgage. Kev, I do love you. Come here. We'll get a mortgage. Leave it to me. I'll nip down to Weatherfield at dinner, see if they'll have us. Kelly reckons it's worth a try. Do you know, I wish you hadn't told him what you did. I thought you were inviting him in last night for a quiet drink, and then there you were, pouring out the whole story to It's him. all right. It's on our side. He'll keep it to himself. You know, you could just apply in your own name, couldn't you? And then you don't have to worry about filling in that form and answering about debts. I said, that. leave it to me. 
Oh, Caleb. Oh, Caleb, I'm glad I've got you to look after me. Have you got a fella that gives you flowers? Have I, Eckers, like? Well, I wish I hadn't. I'm sure he can't afford them. Oh, blow him. Let him. Does your good spit give him flowers? How do you know? Because I've had him give me, haven't I? Who gave you flowers? Ah, Jack. Pull the other one. Ah, Jack, I love you. know, you used to be always sending me flowers when we were first married. Long before we come to live there, when we lived at the other side, when we worked at Butterworths. And he was forever bringing you flowers? Well, he used to come on through Park, didn't he? I we never got caught. Well, it's a mistress to me. Yeah, well, I thought, you know, I couldn't see your Jack spending money on out like flowers. <laughs> flowers are God's creations. That's what we used to say. They belong to all of us. And you can pinch all that God created. Oh, well, that gives him plenty to go up. He created all of us. And I'm one of God's creations. Yeah, well, it pinch you and all if you thought I wasn't looking. <laughs> it's a to himself, hard you? Yes, and so is Baldwin, so come on, let's get going. Hey, if he's in one of his slave driving moods. I'll tell you what I'm going to do if he is. I'm going to switch my machine off and sing Old Man River at the top of my voice, and I hope it shames him. Shame, Sam, I don't know what I mean, that word. <laughs> hey, come on, you two, let's get going. Oh, all right. She's another one, her. They're both target same, bro. Yeah. When are you moving in next door, cop? Oh, um, well, we don't know really yet, cos, well, we're hitting on one or two little snags here. Oh, uh, with mortgage? Uh, yeah. Surprising is that. I would have thought building societies couldn't wait to chuck money at you. It's not as though you're a risk with you both working. Well, it's nothing, but, you know, it's just one or two little snags. That's all. They can always find some, at, can't they, love? See you, Carol. Cheers. Look, will you stop worrying? You'll strike it lucky this time. Oh, I hope so, Carla. This is frightening me to death. Shall I phone him, make sure he don't forget to go to buildings? He sorry. won't forget, not Kevin. No, he won't, will he? Anyway, I'll phone him and just make sure. Look, before you get too excited, never take anything for granted. Always prepare yourself to be disappointed. And then, if something does go wrong and you are disappointed, well, then you're not... Too disappointed? Why is there something... Well, it just occurred to me, see, Kev's applying for this in his own name, isn't he? Which means they'll only take his wages into consideration. Or at least I think they will. Yeah, well, we've thought about that, Curly. God, this is so depressing. Well, it needn't be. How much does Kev earn a week? Would you like to know all our family secrets? Look, I'm only trying to help. I know, and you're lovely with it, Curly. Yeah, I have a walnut whip. Oh, sir. Well, I'll tell him soon. Okay. See you. Well, better not tell. Uh, Jack, yeah. have you heard from Betty yet? Ah, she rang up this morning, huh? Oh. I'm still in London, is she? Aye, aye. They're just asking about Bet. Oh, Betty, she yeah. rang up this yeah. morning. She's not fit to come back to work yet. Still, we're coping, aren't we, Jacko? I am. I'm not so sure about you. Oh, don't talk to me about coping. Are you having a bad time, love? No? You could say that. One of the lads is off sick, and Mavis is chunnering because she has to do his round. Well, I can't say I blame her in this weather. I do a bit of chunnering myself. Well, I, I suppose you're right. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. hello. love. Shut up shop, have we? Well, yes, I thought I'd better. I've had Craig's mother on the line again, and she says that with his weak chest, she don't want him going out these mornings, so he's not coming again. Oh, charm. And I've put her an advert in the window. Good thinking, Mavis. Thank you. Well, let's hope it works. I mean, kids round here turn their nose up at seven quid a week. You know, it's not much these days, though, is it? Do you know, I feel off tenors like there were ten bob no. Yeah. Jack, while well, Alex's out talent spotting, go around on house. Same yeah. again for me and yeah. these two and a sweet oh, sherry oh, for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. What for me? And one for yourself. Thank the Lord, January is nearly dead and buried. Well, I always think February is worse. Jack, oh, yeah. Ma maybe says a schooner of sherry. I think she needs it. Oh. So when you're sending a bunch of flowers to our house, then? Well, happened have your Jack after me. Ah, Jack, he won't notice if you took up residence, unless it caught you pinching his tea. Yeah, <laughs> he sends any flowers there for me. You've had it now, you know. If she says you're a fella, you're a fella. Yeah, well, I'm not complaining. Hey, do you hear that? You've got him where you want him now. Dear, mind your own business. Well, it is my business. I start saving up for a wedding present. Oh, same again, is it? Uh, no, you put your money away. You've got last round. I know he'll love him while I'm away. <laughs> Oops, that was a close thing. What was? I don't think I've got enough for another round. Are you sure to cash? Oh, no, I'm unusual. I'll never be a millionaire, you know. Oh, that's true, I'm millionaire. Seriously, would you like a sub? Oh, bless you, no, love. I cop George Fisher when I get back to base. He owes me a fair bit. What are you doing lending money if you're short? I didn't lend it to him. I won it off him. Oh, I see. You're playing cards again, are we? There's no else to do when you get in that hot love. And I am a winner. There's a few said that. Just before they throw themselves in that coat. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, have you got any jobs going on, them taxis? Are you looking for work, are you? Oh, yeah. 
I've got a clean license and I know the district pretty well, you know. Nah, there's nothing doing, I'm afraid, lad. Uh, <laughs> if hope crops up, I'll... You let him know, won't you? He's a nice lad. I'll keep at him, Martin. He'll let you know. Cheers. Sir. <laughs> Why don't you join us? It's not talking private, are you? That's talk private about, don't we? Well, I can't think of anything, but all the same, you just don't go Oh, look, go on. You're all right. Stay where you are. <coughs> well, you know, that's uh, work we're doing on Hilders. What about it? Well, Kev said he'd see me right, and he still owes me a load of bread. You'll get your money. Well, I should flipping hope so. Look, he's going through a bad time at the minute. Yeah, well, he's not the only one, is he, eh? I'm not a garage mechanic, and I'm, I'm not on a college grant, neither. I might have a job and I need every penny I can put my hands on. Oh, yeah, and what are you going to do when you get it? How do you mean? Well, you're going to declare it, you know, to the doll. Oh, come on, Curly. Well, if you don't, you know what you are. What? You're a member of the black economy and they're after blokes like you. Oh, don't let him worry, he's like that. I know what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, and so do I. And if I was pulling in a crappy 60 quid every week, it'd be different, but I'm nuts. It's just this once. And if you spread it out over all the weeks I've been on doll, it works out about two pence a week. Do you expect me to declare that? Yeah. Oh, oh. Come on, Joey, lad. Get out. Come on, Joey, lad. Let's be having you. Up you go. There you go. Check him out. Hey, right, he was in a bit of a state, wasn't he? Uh, Weren't that Joe Flanagan off Inkerman Street? Ah, oh, his wife up to Leicester yesterday, took the kids with her. So he's drowning his sorrows, is he? Yeah, looks like he's celebrating. Now, if you want to see somebody who's drowning his sorrows, when did you see Fred Henshaw walk in? Who's Hello? Fred Henshaw? Oh, the fella she hops it with. Oh. <laughs> what, we're at the parcel? Old marriage? An honourable estate? Ah, oh, Joey wouldn't have heard that. He was well oiled at his wedding. Oh. <laughs> well, did they ask you anything? Oh, just give me this form to fill out. Right, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to go to Mr Roberts and we're going to ask him to say that we're up to date with our rent again. Oh, sweat we are up to date. Yeah, of course we are. And we've nearly paid off all our debts and then we're going to be home and dry then. Oh, yeah. Read that. Have you ever been refused a mortgage? If so, please state the society concerned and the reasons for refusal. <sighs> oh, Kev, what are we going to do? <laughs> You've been hiding yourself. I've been up and down the street like something not right waiting for you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Eckersley. It's just that we're all at sixes and sevens today. I've had to take my lunch break same time as Mrs. Fairclough. You don't have to tell me you're at sixes and sevens. You don't really think my husband and me read that, do you? Oh, I'm sorry. I should think so and all. I had a coffee morning for St. Clement's, 10 o'clock this morning. It's a good job I got that thing out at Road 4, the old troop tin. And my name would have been mud all over Weatherfield. Mr. Eckersley's a church warden, you know. Well, I've said I'm sorry. I mean, it's just that your boy's off sick with a bad cold. Being sorry's not enough. You've got a responsibility, you have. People judge you by the papers you read, in case you don't know. I see. So do you want me to cancel your Sunday papers, then? No. No, I don't. Sunday papers is different. But during the week, you get newspapers for news, not nudes. Well, there you are, Mrs. Eckersley. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Oh, Kev, can't we just put... No. Why are we in this mess? Because we didn't tell them the truth the first time we applied. But we are telling them the truth. There's only you going to sign that for them, isn't there? So, what difference does that make? Well, it wasn't you that was turned down, was it? It was me that didn't tell you I owed that money. It was me that got turned down. We both signed the form. Yes, but... It... Oh, no, but... We both got turned down. Yes, but you're the one signing the form now, aren't you? You're the one they're going to check up on, and you haven't done anything wrong. Oh, and suppose they go around the other building society. Suppose they find out that way. Well, they wouldn't do that, would they? I don't know, but one thing they do know, I'm not going to risk it. I wish we'd never heard of flaming mortgages. And I wish Sir Godhill they never give us the key and said we could start working on the well, place. Well, she was only being helpful. I owe Martin for the work he's done on the house. He got me paid up for the time I spent here instead of the garage. And Evans knows how much I spent on materials. And look at it all up the spout. It isn't, love. It's all going to work out. You'll see. Will I? 
There we are. Thanks, Thanks very thank much. Tra. Tra. Do you fancy a cuppa? Oh, I wouldn't say no. Well, then, you never do, do you? <sighs> I'll get it if it's too much troll. Oh, come on, maybe. Stop being so damn bad-tempered. I'm only making a joke. Look, let's start again. Do you fancy a cuppa? Yes, please. Then you shall have one. Look, I know we're going through a rough patch, but the sun does have a habit of shining through, and I'm sure it will this time. Okay. Afternoon. Afternoon. You have a card in the window about paper deliveries. Yes. Do you know somebody who might be interested? Well, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Oh. Well, could you ask whoever it is to come in, please? Because we do like to see the applicant himself. You are seeing him. It's me. Well, I know the card said boy or girl, but with no disrespect, that is discrimination, isn't it? But I'm sure it's not intended. Well, no, no, it's just that we were expecting... Well, I mean, you're not exactly a paper boy, are you? <laughs> True enough. <laughs> But then we're both a bit past it, aren't we, Jimmy? Oh, what a lovely dog. Hey, that's Jimmy. And he's just as keen as I am, you know. Aren't you, lad? He loves a good walk. So you are serious, then? Oh, definitely. I wouldn't have wasted the time if I hadn't been. Here we are. Oh, one cup. Uh, thank you. This gentleman's come about the pet boy's job. Oh, yes. Do you know somebody that would like the, the job? He wants it for himself. For himself? I, I know you were expecting somebody a bit younger. Well, about 50 years younger, if you don't mind me saying so. No, I, I do realise it's Mrs Fairclough, isn't it? That's right. Do I know you? No. My name's Ashton, Harry Ashton. No, you wouldn't know me, but I knew your husband. Or I knew of him, I should say. I was very sorry to hear about the accident. Thank you. He was a good workman, very well respected. He, he did a job at a house next to me, in Nelson Street. Oh, yes. Yes. Well... <laughs> hey, look, before you go, it's not that we necessarily have anything against people of your age. It's just that, um... Well, it, it's very physically demanding. Yes. I mean, uh, out yes. in all weathers, mm. up early in the morning. Mm. Ah, now, I certainly would not let you down in that regard. You see, keeping fit is one of my obsessions, as you might say. And I've never been one for lying in bed of a morning. Have a Jimmy. He'll tell you. We've had our breakfast, we're out and about. Before seven o'clock most morning, so that wouldn't harm me. Well, the pay's not very good. Well, I did take the liberty of asking about a bit, so... I've got a good idea of how much you'll be offering, and that doesn't bother me either. You see, it wouldn't interfere with my pension. And it would be a little bit extra. That's always welcome. And it is a worthwhile job, bringing news to people. Well, uh... What shall we say? Look, uh, could you pop in again tomorrow? I mean, it'd give us a chance to have a think about it. Yes, yes, certainly. Uh, uh, and if you did decide to say yes, would you want me fairly soon? Well, yes, yes. I suppose yes. we would, really. It's just that one of the boys, well, his mother don't want him to come again because he's got a weak chest. There you go, you see. Some of us olders, we're fitted at young'uns. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be a good afternoon, ladies. And thank you very much for your kind consideration. Come on. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Hi, Eck, I thought you were a bit long in tooth for a paper girl, but he beats cock fighting. Hey, what's this moussaka like, cock? Oh, it's good. You just chuck it in microwave. Oh, sounds like me. Hey, we've seen a lot of you in here today. Oh, we've seen a lot of them and all of us, you husband, know. He only comes in for a chat, I'm uh, just giving her the benefit of me wisdom. Well, I'm only here because I'm that rotten at shopping. Alex has been out all day. I forgot to get him something tasty for his tea. If it's your husband, you tend to forget, so be warned. Unless you're young and starry, I'd like this one. Well, he'll like that, Masaka. Good. That's all he's getting. Listen, I've been thinking. You know what your problem is? You reckon that if a little fib or two will get things moving, go, right, let's have a little fib or two. But we're not all the same, love. Yeah, well, Kevin certainly isn't. Oh, I know, I know. You see, Kevin thinks that if you tell lies, you'll get yourself into trouble. And he's right. But whether he's right or wrong, it's not worth rowing about, is it? You see, he's the man of the house. It's his responsibility. And he wants to deal with it in his own way. So let him, OK? OK. Yeah, Curly, have a walnut whip. I've just had one. Just counting. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, no, look, <laughs> come in. Sit yourself down. This 
Wilson, would you like a beer? No, not till I get rid of my cap. I'll have a cup of tea if there's one going there. Oh, see if I can squeeze you one, love. Have you had a nice day? Yeah, not bad. Hey, by the way, did you see that friend of yours? You know, that one that owes you money? Oh, George Fish, you mean? Uh, yeah. Did you pay up? Uh, yeah, well, more or less. Uh, he didn't have the cash, so I took goods in lieu. Oh, you see if that wants what's it up. Yeah, well, as long as it's wet. What, uh, mm. what did you mean by, uh, goods in lieu? Merchandise, keep fit stuff. Uh, actually, that's what I've come round for. Do you mind if I store them here? Oh, you know what my dog kennel's like? Yeah, of course you can. Ah, right. Hey, hold on a minute. They're not dodgy, are they? What do you mean, dodgy? Well, they've not fallen off a lorry or out like that, have they? Would I do a thing like that to you? Darling, it's not you I'm worried about. It's this George, whatever his name is. It's strictly kosher. Ah, he just fancies himself as a bit of an entrepreneur. You know, he's always got something to sell. And he wasn't too sure he could get rid of this lot. Oh, why have you taken them, then? Because <laughs> I'm daft. That's dead right, Miss Hunt. Cheers. So where are you going, look? Oh, the Roxy Curler. Oh, Roxy, what's on? Nightmare on Elm Street 3. It's horror picture about this horrible madman. You've been wasting your time. You'll have one of them sat next to you. There's nothing wrong with Curler. <laughs> Not as horrible as some we could mention, hello. Thank God he isn't. What are you staring at? You know, he's thoughtful and polite. He always walks on the outside of me in the street. And he always lets me sit down first. Does he open doors for you? Yeah, always. Oh, you are lucky. Those days have gone. But mm. well, it's your own fault, isn't it? You want to treat you like fellas, and when we do, you're grousy. You're playing football, mud wrestling, flying aeroplanes. Open your own flaming doors. Jack Seller. It's a losing battle, love. A losing battle. Mm. <laughs> Tell you, I'm not keen to do another early morning. Oh, don't worry. We'll sort some it out. Hey, do you think Jenny had left her hand? I would doubt it. What about this old fella? Oh, I don't think he's quite right for it, do you? No, I mean, he's keen enough. So, no. it's going to be all down to you. Do you fancy getting up at six o'clock in the morning? Not a lot. Good evening. Oh. What are they? Exercise wheels. Exercise with them. Look, oh, like this. <laughs> Come on, give us a hand up. <laughs> Oh, we'll make a bomb if we can get rid of this lot. Oh, yeah, safe. Uh, how do you reckon we're going to do that? Well, what about over the road? Do you reckon the girls will go for them? Well, they've got to sell a couple, but I mean, how many are there? Well, there's a heck of a lot. Oh, no. Oh, well, we'll think of some. We're a good team. Hi. Is uh, is half of what I owe you. I'll give you the other things. Just, well, when I can, OK? You can't you manage it now? Well, I would if I could. Don't worry, I'm not going to skip the contract. Right, I'm not saying you will do it. It's just that... Oh, you're both working on that. I think I did a good job for you. Yeah, you did. We really appreciate it. We will keep you waiting. Right. Can you fancy a drink? Well, thanks. Just get your own. No, let's sit down. Oh, what do you want? Just sit down. Right, when are you going to go and see about this mortgage? Tomorrow. As soon as it can slow up. And how are you going to answer that question? Are you going to say we've got turned down? No, I'm just going to leave it blank. Tell them the story and then ask them. Yes, but Kevin... No, if... but it's me who's going to do the talking, so I'll do it my way, OK? OK. OK. Right, Wayne. There you go. That's your lot. Yeah. Oh, Radcliffe Road. Do we have to go down there? It's just across the road from where you usually start. We're doing our best to find somebody, Wayne, and it won't be for long. Yeah, and there'll be a few extra bob in it for you, won't there? Oh, yeah, of course there will. I mean, fair's fair. Fair's huh? fair. Fair's fair. If I have to treat that young lout as if he's made of eggshell china one more day... Well, it's either that love or do it yourself. Well, I hope you're included in that. Don't worry, I'll do my share. You don't want to wait, maybe, so? No, I don't. We promised her a morning off and she's going to have it. I mean, if we can treat Wayne as if he's worth his weight in gold, we can give Mavis an extra hour in bed. It's just a thought, that's all. Right. Oh, hello. Morning, oh, Mrs. Fairclough. I thought I'd killed two birds with one stone. Show you that I wasn't having you on about being up and about early. And whilst I am here, do a sort of trial run for you. Deliver a few papers, unless they've all gone out. Uh, no, no, they haven't. Um, th this is the gentleman I was telling you about, Mr oh, Ashton. Yeah. Uh, this is Mr Bradley, my partner. Oh, pleased to meet Mr Bradley. How did you? I don't know if Mrs Fairclough told you. She has, yes. Uh, look, I don't want to be rude or anything, but 
Getting you up to it, I mean... I'll tell you, know, you what. Don't... If you're doubting my fitness, why don't we have a walk-in race? Bessie Street School and back, just to show. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Oh, no, there's no need for that, no. It was just that, uh, I was, um... <clears throat> what do you think? Well, you're keen, aren't you? Keen as mustard. You know, when you get to my age, folk tend to think you're good for nothing. Either that or they want to leave you on your own and do now. And that's very tempting, you know, do now. There's some money's I'd lie in bed if it wasn't for him here. Jumping up, giving me a lick. And I don't want to lie in bed in the morning. I want to get up, do something useful. Set myself up at rest at day. Right, well, if you feel like that, do um, you know the top end of Bolton Road? Hey, that's a bit far out. Yes, no, we're up there most mornings. You've been Woodthorpe Road, Upsley Avenue, around there. That's exactly what I mean. Now then, you see, when you change streets, it's marked in full. Otherwise, it's just numbers till you change streets again. OK? You'll soon get the hang of it. That's clear enough. You could understand that, couldn't you? Right, then. Hey, you you try and uh, push them right through the letterbox. I mean, if you leave a little bit hanging out, it's a uh, temptation for kids, and round here, they don't need much. It is a wicked world. <laughs> right, then. Are you ready for the big adventure? Come on. <laughs> Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Ta Right, I hope that never happens to me. When delivering papers is a big adventure. Oh. What's then? Have you had a look? No, I am had a look. That's not like you, Vera. I'll blow you then. I don't want to know what they are. They're exercise wheels. Wheels what you exercise with. Get one out, have a look for yourself. Oh. What was that then? The Don's, I'm looking after them for him. Oh, hey, knocked off, have her. Going cheap. I'll take a couple off your hands. They're not knocked off going cheap. No, he's, uh, he's bought them off a mate. Oh, uh -huh. Well, uh, what's he going to do with them? He's going to sell them. Sell them? How many has he got? He's got a lot. Look, uh, put it back, Vera. Let's get a crossroad. Right. So has this fella he got them off, then? And your own business, Vera. What? We sent him out on the papers. He wanted to go, so we sent him. I can't believe this. He's a pensioner. Well, Alan wasn't too keen, so it's either sending Harry out or turfing you out of bed. <gasps> now how do you feel about I it? I feel appalled, absolutely appalled. Have you thought what would happen if he had a heart attack or something? We'd be liable. Oh, come on, Mavis. He's not 110. He says himself he's fit as a flea and he certainly looks it. I don't it. care how he looks. It's a very tiring job delivering newspapers. It saps your energy. Oh. Who sent that old bloke out on Craig's round? Ah, you see, what does it tell you? Look. Right, what's the matter? Oh, what's to be? <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, you want to do some exercises, lad? Some deep breathing? Do you the world a good? It's too much television, this does it, you know. They forget how to use the legs. Hey, don't push him too hard, Harry. He might have a heart attack and then we'd be liable, wouldn't we, Miss Riley? Have you taken him on? Well, I'm thinking about it. Why? Why? This is a lad's job. How's a school kid supposed to earn a bit of spending money if you'd start taking on OAPs? Well, there weren't any school kids applied, as far as I know. You didn't give him much time, did you? Greedy old devil. Hey! You just show a bit of respect, Wayne. It's Mrs Fairclough takes paper lad people on, not you. Well, if she takes any more of these sort on, you can keep that, cos I'm chucking it in, right? Oh, dear. Oh, take no notice. Some of these school children today, they're just born rebels. Whereas we've no doubts to your fitness, have we, Mavis? No. None at all. So, if you'd like to report for duty at five o'clock to do the evening papers, OK? Well, I wouldn't want to start any trouble. Oh, don't worry, you won't. We'll take care of Wayne. And we'll look forward to seeing you tonight. Well, what can we say to that, Jimmy? What should we say to these two kind ladies, Aww. eh? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Mrs. Fairclough. And thank you, Miss Riley. Oh. You don't know what it means to have somebody show a bit of faith in you. Aww. Well, five o'clock, you said. Five right, we'll both be here on the dock. Come on, come on, Jimmy. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. bye, -bye. Well, you've changed your tune. One of my greatest attributes, which isn't shared by many people I know, is that I'm always willing to admit when I'm in the wrong. True, Mavis, very true. But then, look at the practice you've had. So, what time's your appointment? Quarter to one, so I better be going. That, that's good, that, because whoever you're seeing goes for his lunch at one, so they're not expecting it to take long. It's a good sign, that. Yeah, well, it doesn't take long to say no, does it? Oh, I'm sorry, love. They won't say no. Not when you ask them, will they, Kurt? Definitely not. But let him go. You'll have him late. All right. Well, let's have a look at you. 
Oh, you look terrific. I'd give you a million mortgages. Yeah, well, one would do. So keep your fingers crossed. All right. See ya. Bye. Well, I'm glad it's him and not me. Ah, well, it's a very worrying time. But I've always had an aptitude for that kind of thing. I'm not bad, you know, when it comes to filling in forms. Oh, I wish I was. Well, just leave it to Kev. What do you think they're going to say, Kel? Do you think they're going to give us a mortgage? Well, they'd better. Look, I know you feel that the world's against you right now, but it's not like that. Honest. In a few years, you'll be laughing about this. Oh, well, I hope so. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Kev's not around. Only a bit in the garage and... Well, it's not there, is it? Well, it's gone off to the building society. Oh, I thought you finished with all that. Well, we have nearly. Only, uh, you know that 30 quid he gave us yesterday? Yeah. Well, well he still owes us another 30 quid, so... Well, I was just wondering, like, if... Uh, well, you know how fast money goes, don't you? I mean, I'd no sooner got that yesterday and it's gone. Yeah, all right, I'll tell him. You're going to get your money. Well, I did put a lot of hard work in, you I've know. I've said you're going to get your money! Yeah, but... Just mention I've been around, will you? Yeah, I'll tell him. Right. Talking like that in front of you. Some people don't know the meaning of manners. Well, I knew anyway. I mean, he was sound enough about it in the pub. Oh, yeah? Well, he had no right to. Oh, look, look, don't be so hard on him. It can't be any fun in the dole. Well, he wouldn't be on the dole, would he, Curl? He didn't walk out of his job at the cafe. Well, can you blame him? It's not much of a job for a fellow with any pride. And what about my pride? Walking in here and blasting out how much we owe him. Blame him, Nick. Once you get your teeth in something, you don't let go, you, do you? Oh, well. Listen, why don't we go down the rovers for something to eat? All right, I'll follow you down. I've got to wait for Audrey. All right. Hey, and, and listen, if Martin's in, remember what I said. All right. Anything else? No, thanks. That was great. Cheese sandwich, half price to the unemployed? Uh, no, nah, really. It's dead filling, that suit. Cheers, anyway. Ah! <laughs> Have you heard it? Is it a bicycle with no wheel? Well, more like a wheel with no bicycle. It's <laughs> not. Look, Shirley, it's a wheel. It's got a rod running through middle, right? Mm. And you get hold of the rod at tea tens like that, and you, you lie down on the floor and you roll and you... Well, you exercise. <laughs> oh. I shall show you one, won't you? No, I will not, Vera, and you can keep your nose out as well. The dons have nothing to do with anybody else. Hiya. Mm. Have you had the soup? Mm. What's it like? Uh, sort of vegetable-y. Bet, just a ham sandwich, please. Right, cop. Are you uh, still worried about the money that Kev owes you? Thirty quid might be nothing to you, Curly. Listen, if you'd helped him out as a pal instead of expecting money for it, you wouldn't be feeling like this now, would you? Oh, yeah, then what are you studying in that college of yours? Religion? No, and I'm not studying out a fiddle the DHSS either. Mm. Oh, are you? Hi. Do you want something to eat? Well, just a salad bar cake. And you for afters. <laughs> Bet, uh, a salad bar cake, please, and uh, a jug of cream to pour over my head. <laughs> Oh, anybody yeah. drinking? Well, we're all right for a minute. <laughs> you will be proud of me when you hear where I've been. Where have you been? Weatherfield Market to book a stall for Sunday. We'll have a few laughs and we'll make a few quid. Not with me, you won't. You're not getting me on no market. I've had some, I don't like it. And besides, I'm no good at selling. I'll do the selling, you just help out. No. Hey, I'll go with you if you like. You won't. Well, I'm not talking to you. There is wheels. You can do what he likes with them. You said so yourself. So how about it, kid? Cos my fear could knock hers into a cocktail. hat. You're not going? No, thanks, Vera. Look, I'll manage on my own. Uh, will you be sorry? You want not Oh, she's in here. Hi, Bert. Have you got um, any hot pot? On your own, are you? Yeah, Kev's gone off to the building society. Better him than me. They scare me after death, them places, still. He's a brave lad. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. Webster. That's right, yeah. Sorry to keep you. Would you come through? Janice, any chance of a couple of coffees? I take it you'd like a coffee? Um, please. Well, now, you came in yesterday and made an appointment, I understand. Yeah, that's right. Have you managed to fill in the application form? Yeah, I've brought it with me. Do sit down. Thank you. Just in a single name, I see. Uh, yeah, that's right. There's a question here that hasn't been answered. About previous refusals. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't sure what to put, so I thought I'd wait and ask. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Thank you. 
Not as good as Betty's, is it? I'll admit it. When it comes to cooking, some of us have got it, some of us haven't. I haven't. Oh, I'm not all that clever myself, but... No, it's not that. It's fine. I'm just not really that hungry. You're very kind, though. Sparing my feelings. What's up, kid? Is life getting you down a bit? Yeah, a bit. How much was this debt? Uh, about 200 pounds. It was before we got married and what with all the upset and the family moving away. Well, the wife forgot all about it. So when the other building society mentioned it, well, we looked into it and we paid it up. So it's all clear now. I see. So when we saw the question on your form, well, we didn't know where to put. So we thought we'd check before we filled it in. I'm very glad you did. It may be a cliché nowadays, but honesty still is the best policy. Because you can get yourself in such a mess if you don't tell the truth. Well, you'd know. It's happened to you. Anyway, you're quite right to put the facts in front of me. And I'm sure it won't be a problem. Not in view of the circumstances. If you'd like to answer the question, yes, see letter attached. I'll tell you what to put before you go. All right. Now, let's have a look at the rest of it. You don't have to rush, I'll manage. Selena, you, you'll have a great time. You will? Won't she have a great time? Yeah, of course she will. Doing what? Well, her and her boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. Well, her and this gentleman friend, you know, that drives the taxi, he's got hold of a few of them exercise wheels. And he wants her to go help him flog them on market on Sunday. Only her being who she is, you know, thinking she's all I might. It has nothing to do with being I am mighty, Vera. Only her being who she is, you don't want to go. I want to get back to work, that's where I want to go. So come on, let's get going. Check them out for me, Sally Love. Right. Yeah, but you, you, you miss a great time, you know. Oh, I can remember about three years ago, me and our Jack flogging a load of car seat covers. Oh, yeah, and where'd you get them from? Well, me and our Jack, you know who he is. Well, I never asked. But I'll tell you what, I laughed that much that my insides were sore and we made a lot of grass. Right, well, if you want another laugh here, you can go and tittle yourself, cos you're not getting me on no market. Now, come on, Baldwin will be after it. Come on. And, hang on a minute, Sally. You give me 50p show, love. Oh, I'm sorry, Ivy. I've got a lot on my mind at the moment. Oh, it's easy, dear. Hi, Curly. Hi, Curly. What time is it? Uh, it's about half one. Oh, he should have been back by now. Oh, don't worry. He's probably stopped off for a drink on the way home. He better not have stopped off for a drink on the way home. Only to celebrate. How drowny sorrows, you mean? Look, have a walnut whip. It's on me. I'll be looking like one of them soon. They don't solve anything. Where have you been? The building society, Anna. Well. What did they say? Look, Curly, can you hang on to the fort for a couple of minutes? Me? Two you minutes, not a second longer. Right, oh. you, upstairs. Um. Upstairs! <laughs> can you go? Jeff, he's going to be worrying himself, sick. I will go down and tell him. He's not much of a joke kidding on his bad news when he sees it. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. Oh, well, what did he say? Well, the application's been processed and we'll hear from him in due course. Well, is that good news or bad? Well, Mrs Kenworth, they don't seem it's a problem, so it's good. How many more times do you want oh, to tell him? Oh, I can't believe it! <laughs> hey, and they got top marks for honesty. Oh, you're so not going to go on future. about that, are you? Well, it's the last time I mention it, as long as you... It's the it. last time I do anything stupid like borrowing money and forgetting all about yeah, it. Yeah, cross your heart. I cross my heart. Oh, come on, let's <laughs> tell Kelly. I'll have a heart attack, you know. He's been worried about me ever since you went. Hey, I think there's two beers in fridge. <laughs> Kelly, it's good news! Well, I'm sorry it's a bit expensive, but it's nice notepaper. Well, it'll be worth it if it lands me a job, eh? Yeah. Nothing doing yet. I mean, according to news, things are looking up. Um, oh, not for me, they're not. Well, why don't you get yourself on one of Cheers. them quiz games on telly, win yourself a few quid? Yes, I think you do very well. I mean, you're quite well read and sharp, isn't you, Rita? Well, you're certainly not as thick as most of them round here. Oh, that's <laughs> what they call dummy me faint plays, you know. <laughs> I take no notice. You get yourself on one. How do you do it? Just write in. What, me and the other 10,000? Well, they've got to choose somebody. I mean, drop a line to all of them. You never know your luck. Mm. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I'll give it a think, then. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Bye. Ta-ra. Oh, he won't do anything. I know, and I agree with you. I think he'd be very good. But that's his trouble, isn't it? I mean, if he's clever enough to know he'd win, he's clever enough to know the odds are stacked against him being chosen in the first place, so he doesn't write. Now, somebody like Jack Duckworth, he'd write in tomorrow, be on TV next week, and pick up a thousand quid for knowing which horse dropped court leg in 1924 Grand National. It's an unfair world. Oh, 
Oh, come to apologise, have you? Nah, I was only kidding. I should think so. Well, I just came to tell you, though, one of the lads out of our school fans is coming on the papers, and I know we're in short, so he said he can start tomorrow, all right? No. No, I'm sorry, but we've already taken somebody else on, Wayne. Not that bloody I don't get that was in this morning. Hey, just be careful what you talk about your elders and betters. About me what? He might be a bit older than me, but I'm blowed if he's any better than me. You watch, he won't even last a month out. Well, your pal Craig didn't last so long, did he? I mean, he pocketed his Christmas tips and took to his bed. So you don't want me mate, then? Tell your mate thanks. But no thanks. No, we don't want him. We've got fixed up. OK. We'll be sorry you did this. Thank you, Rita. I mean, we can't be dictated to by ignorant young brats like these, can I'm sorry, but I can't think of any other words to describe them. Oh, I quite agree with you, Mavis. Unfortunately, these ignorant young brats have a habit of turning nasty. Let's hope we're not heading for trouble. Oh, oh I'm glad you've come, love. You can make me a cup of tea. I've been working and all, you know. Get off. You've been sat down all day. I've been running here and there like I don't know what. Why have you come anyway? Oh, charming. I'll come again. I came to show you this. What is it? It's the receipt for them exercise wheels. The receipt that George got when he bought them. OK? So what? So? They didn't fall off the back of a lorry. I never said they did. Ah, you thought so, though, didn't you? That is why you won't come to the markets with me, innit? Look, if I did come with you, what would you want me to do? I'll show you. I want you in the crowd. Come on, stand up. Uh, over there, come on. Come on. Uh, no, behind this fat lady here. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, keeping fit these days can cost you a small fortune. Indian clubs, golf clubs, health clubs. You'll be fit, all right, but you'll be broke into the bargain. Uh, Excuse me, I've not seen you before. Ah, no, don't tell me, don't tell me. I've got a great memory for faces. Uh, Stockport Market three months back, right? You said that. Right. Yeah, and you bought one of my exercise wheels, right? Right. Forgive me, I didn't recognise you straight off. You've taken a bit of weight off, haven't you? Dare I ask, what did you weigh last time I saw you? 28 and a half stone. Eleven and a half will do. Eleven and a half still, ladies and gentlemen, would you believe it? And all from using one of these? Yes. Marvellous. Look and learn, ladies and gentlemen, look and learn. Can I ask you why you're here today? Well, you told me to come. No. No, look, when I said that, you've got to use your imagination. You've got to say something like... Like, uh, I came to buy one for my daughter. I came to buy one for my daughter. And you shall have one and make it do as much good for her as it has done for you. Here we are. Uh, excuse me, madam, with my compliments. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to do the same for all of you. But you can see, this lady is a very good advertisement. It's clever, that bit. So, if you want to be healthier, happier, more attractive to the opposite sex, or for the price of a packet of fags, I'm not asking ten, I'm not asking five, I'm not asking two pounds, one pound fifty, and the world is your oyster. <laughs> well... You've missed your way, you. <laughs> do you reckon we could do it? I reckon we'll have a few laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> oh, go on, Ken. Let's call him over and get it straight. Martin? Yeah? Just come here a minute. Huh? Look, I'm, uh, sorry it's late, mate. There's the other 30 quid I owe you. Great, right, cheers. How's it going, all right? Yeah, fine. Yeah, it's still a lot to do. Well, look, uh, I don't mind giving you an hand for a pint or two. I mean, I'd sooner do it for a quid or two, you know, but if you strap for cash, then that's it, isn't it? Uh, we'll sort something out. Can you give my ass in a pint, please, love? Do you know, I was wondering when he was going to start drinking. It's all right, Chuck. Coming out the rain any time you like. <laughs> well, what's the matter with her now? Well, when I left, Harry hadn't come back off his evening paper round, so maybe he thinks he's been mugged. Well... Well, I have a feeling that gentleman can take care of himself very well. You know, Mavis, she worries for the world. Oh! Oh, thank goodness! Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, but... I had a bit of a barney with a gang of kids. One of them pinched me flashlight, so I had to go chase after him. Oh, dear. Oh, there were no trouble. He ran down a dead entry, so we caught him there. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy here frightened him to death. He wouldn't hurt a fly, really, but he can look nasty sometimes when I tell him to. Well, I was getting very worried about you. Oh, that's very kind of you. 
Oh, that reminds me. I've got you to thank for getting me this job, haven't I? I mean, it was you who persuaded Mrs. Fairclough to take me on, wasn't it? Oh, well. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And if you'd let me repay your kindness at some time, I'd be very pleased. I'll tell you what. I like to dine out every so often. It's a little treat, you know. And there's a nice place I go to in the precinct, so next time I go... Oh, well, look, look, there's no need for that, really. There's... Well, I know there isn't, but I'm asking you because I want to. I'd consider it a great honour if you would accompany me. Well, I suppose if you put it like that... I do. I'll let you know. Right. Well, come on, let's get off home. We'll see Miss Riley again in the morning. It's one thing working with children, but when it comes to socialising, I much prefer the company of my own age group. And the soap drama continues after the break with Rachel and Chris making secret plans in Emmerdale.